Hey, Jimmy. Hey. There we go. Here's Ed. You sure? Gary. Oh, I have to remember to grab me some more blue tomorrow. That's your 55 you're working on there, Bob? Yep. Looking good, brother. I'm going to have to grab me some more glue tomorrow. I'm just about out. Hey, Need to get you some more orange paint, too. Yeah. Transparent paint. You want to borrow mine? <laughs> You know, the other odd thing is that I have the, the markers, and a lot of times I'll just do the marker after yeah. I'm done. I'm just sitting there think, you know, that for some reason tonight that I was just grab that transparent orange and throw it on there and be done with it. Not only it turned into a big mess, but I didn't even need to do it anyway. Because the thing had the decals for the marker lights. Oh, well. <laughs> the rate I go through that stuff, I still got enough to last another couple of years. And that's all I use as far as painting marker lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have this whole set of, set of color Sharpies that I could do the exact same thing with. Yeah. Yeah, I've got something kind of like that. Uh, yeah. How she's gonna look. I mean, Oop. oh, nice. That looks wonderful, Sean. I like that. Oh, it looks good. That's uh, the LSX from JPS Customs. Yeah. Yeah, the heater hoses stick out the side. I just haven't put them in yet until I put the body on for final. And it's a super chrome with some awesome stuff. Yeah, you'll probably be done this week sometime, tomorrow, the next day. I'll get the body uh, cleared tomorrow. <sighs> Bob, what is the uh, what is the process of on on these emblems on this card on these cars? Don't you put bare metal foil over them, then paint it? On some of them, yeah, I will. I will. Uh, on this one, they had they had decals for them already. 
for the Bel Air. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, front and back. Uh, so you just shaved it? So I just put those on and, and, and put the decal over it. Well, it said separate chrome parts for them, and then they had the decals to go on the chrome parts. I got you. Otherwise, like the Mustang, yeah, I put the foil down before I painted it. And then used a, 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 a toothpick and some uh, lacquer thinner to clean the top after it was painted. I do that on like the Corvette logos on the back, so the Corvette and stuff I got too. Ones that are too small to, to try to bare metal foil after they're done. Too fine. Right. And go grab one. I did that way. Oh, da, 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 da. Hey, Mike, who are you calling a hoe? <laughs> Who's hoeing? Mini Mike, you say he's right right out of the that. Oh, there. I put the foil on it before I painted it and then just used the uh, toothpick and lacquer thinner on it. To clean the paint off. Same thing for the. I know it's out of focus. I apologize, but. Oh, I'm sorry. This camera won't. won't so play. does uh, does the bare metal fault? Does it actually show up around the edge? Um, if you cut it real nice and close, it doesn't. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. If you can cut it in fairly close. Yeah. If the time you're burying it under the. You're burying it under the paint, then you're cleaning the uh, then you're cleaning the paint off of the top of it, and then you're putting a yeah. clear over the top. It's pretty buried yeah. in. Yeah, I'll be right back. So it's uh, if you get it in just the right angle, you can kind of see it, see the edge of it. But if you cut it real close, then you won't. You're not gonna. Right. As opposed to that's, what I, that's what I was wondering. I've never tried that before, but I mean, I've heard people, you know, talking about how they did that. Yeah, if I were going to do this one, I would have cut a strip as close, you know, after I put it on, cut it as close as I could to the yeah. edge of the of the of the badge, and after right. I painted it. Um. When the paint was dry to the touch, I would go through with the toothpick with just the I'm gonna grab one. <laughs> that I just dipped the, the end of the toothpick in the lacquer thinner so it's just kind of wet. And yep. you just kind of work you work your way over it over the part that you want. And you have to go through go through a lot of these because they get fouled up and then you clean it off just the top of the lettering. Yeah. And Red's wanting to know if you cover that with the primer or if you I usually put it on after you could put it on before the primer, uh, but it, I usually do it oh after the primer. I'll put the foil on before the paint color. Yeah, yeah, you could put it on on the bare plastic first to prime more over it, clean it off, do the same thing, clean it off the top. That would even help bury it further down. Clean it yeah. off the top, the clean the primer off the top of the foil. Then paint it and come back and clean it the second time. That would bury any edges even even deeper, so that they're less likely to show up. I'd be afraid of the uh, the primer etching the foil. We're well, not going to leave it on there real long. If I when I put it with the primer, I basically put it on, wait ten minutes for it to dry enough, then I go ahead and, and clean it off the top, yeah. ten or fifteen minutes. But yeah, you, well, if you're not using an, if you're using like uh, to me a primer or something like that, it's not going to etch the metal. No, if you're using an automotive etching primer, that would be a different story. Yeah, because it's designed to eat into the metal. Yeah, 
because sometimes I use uh, Rust-Oleum 2X primer. Sometimes I use uh, Tamiya primer. Sometimes I use Mr. Surfacer. You know, it. Sometimes I use an acrylic out of my airbrush. You know, it really just kind of depends on what I'm going to be putting over that primer. And if you're worried about that, you can always do a test on it, you know. Yeah. And I've seen another technique where people take an easy way to regular foil and, and burnish it on, not the not the not the adhesive foil. Yeah. Burnish it on, take it off, and then fill that with uh, CA, and then and then cut it and trim it because then that makes like a regular chrome piece that would just go blue on after it's done. That yeah. seems like a lot of work to I've me. I've seen that technique done before, but that seems like a lot of work to me. But Yeah, I've done that way before too, Red. Uh, uh, I don't have that car here anymore where it was a candy paint. So I had to, already had a silver base on it. And so when I was polishing it, I just polished over the badges. I just polished over them until the color coat came off and you were back to the silver base. And that worked out really well. I could probably... I could probably pull up a picture of that. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. I don't have that, I don't have that model anymore. I gave it away. It's a and Christmas present, but I've got the way for there. test doing a test on, like say the bare metal foil. If you wanted to put that down and then primer over it, just take you a spoon. Take take you a test spoon. Put your bare metal foil on it. Prime it. Let it sit for a little while. For however long you'd let it sit on the model before you cleaned it and then clean it up and see what the foil looks like after that. Yeah. I'm about to suggest like a spare body or something. Yeah. I think yeah. It's a want, you want to try it out once? And yeah. I got a, about a dozen 67 yeah, Chevelle bodies I'll be testing. On an actual badge, get a spare paint mule body. But you're Boil on it, prime it, clean it, paint it, clean it. So it works. And I've seen people also do the pad print technique, you know, with the pencil eraser and the silver paint. Uh, that would probably work too. I don't know if I, I'm not that as proficient at that. You probably would want to mask off as much around it as you could when you did that. And then there's always just uh decant a little bit of your uh chrome paint like your molotov or whatever and then use a super duper fine little paint brush like this one right here this is a yep. uh, this is a 20 aught i used to do that my hands just aren't steady enough for that anymore dip the very tip of it in the paint and then just barely touch it to the badging Hey, oh, Ryan. Hey, Sharpie. Ryan. How you doing, brother? Yeah, a, doing really, a really fine point Sharpie. That's what I use a lot. A little tired and groggy and sore, but I'm all right. I know about the tired and I know about the groggy because my insomnia uh -huh. flared up last night and I haven't had any sleep since yesterday morning. <laughs> A sniper, a sleeper, a bad painter, and a chatterbox with a cover. Yeah. Suck my big toe, too, Fafa. You must have said that before I came in here. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, this is one. This is the one I did where I polished the, the candy off of, off of the silver base. I have to you can see that. Looks good. That turned out damn good right there. I like that. I like those rooms, those wire rooms with the good years that look good on there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was all just polished off of the 
promised to paint off of the silver base coat over with the candy paint on that one. Yeah, that was uh that was Kenny May's Christmas present one year. Is that a sixty-six or seven? Sixty-seven. He built one for the cancer awareness group build and, and he had such a hard time with it that I built him one that, that he hated it, so I built one built him one for Christmas. Nice. Three sleepers in, Bob. Okay. Well, Ryan's in here too. He's never fallen asleep in my stream. No. I ain't falling asleep in anybody's stream, but I have I've gotten awfully tired a few times. <laughs> well hey, at least that ain't a snore like me and Perry. But then again, just to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, Ryan doesn't normally actually turn his camera on, so we can't be certain if he's asleep or not. Yeah, I can talk <laughs> in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, say if his, he was still on and not, make, not making any sound for a while, we might have think you got asleep. You know, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I one, of, I'm one of them kind of people that when certain conversations are going on, I just silently just don't interrupt not not my place to tell somebody to just shut up you know? i forgot this was the one i put the buick <laughs> hemi into you put a hemi in a corvette too a buick one yeah a buick hemi oh oh looks good though that's nice A little hard to see with all the reflecting light, but yeah, I know. If I turn it off, it's too dark. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. He leaves. <laughs> Let me switch back to the other camera. You remember back in the day oh, when you could. Type. Remember back in the day when you could order from Ravel and Monogram and get any car part or body you needed? Mm -hmm. I had bought or I had ordered a Corvette body, just the body, nothing else. And I ended up making my own windows, my own dash, everything else from the parts bin. Here, I'll, I'll share it so I can talk about it a little bit if you don't mind. Yeah, let's see it. The hood is from the 68, 69 Firebird. It's got Ooh. a Hemi in it. It's got a 69 Olds Cutlass chassis under it. It's got a 67 Corvette dash in it. It's got a lift-up trunk that Corvette never had. <laughs> There you can see yeah. the Hemi. And it also hinges this way, not this way. <laughs> there's there's the big old Hemi. It even had the rubber band for the freaking belt on there, but it it uh it stretched and after so many years broke apart. But there's the, the cutlass chassis, you can see where I cut it down. Damn are some fat ass tires. Yeah, these are the the Ravel Max Rat style. And there you can see the waterfall double bubble 67 Corvette dash in it. This one is still currently in this condition. And like I said, all I bought was the body or had ordered, made my own window, my own rear window, and everything else was parts box. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's pretty cool, man. So when Bob said he put a Hemi in a Corvette, I'm like, what? You too? <laughs> yeah, well, be a Hemi, yeah. But it's still Hemi. <laughs> Maybe not as big as a 426 Hemi, but it's still Hemi. Mopar nut. 
I mentioned Hemi and Mopar not jumped on. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Mopar would be proud of me. I'm shoving a Hemi in something. Well, Mopar Nut, I found out recently in the last few months that you can use heat shrink to make belts for cars. Yep. I thought that was really cool. I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have one of them assortment boxes that have all the tiny ones all the way up to the really big ones. And just cut a strip off of the little, the big one, wrap it around, heat it up till it shrinks to fit, walk away. Hemi, hemi, hemi. <laughs> hemi, hemi, hemi. It's got a hemi in it. <laughs> well, part be happy. I'm shoving a hemi in something. <laughs> in a, a top fuel blown hemi in a 32 Ford for seniors build. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a uh, freaking out one of the old top fuel drag car Mopar kits. Um, hey, Michael, you're I, welcome, welcome to join in. Mopar not, you too. You're welcome to join I, the live. I uh, I won the kit from a blue ox on a giveaway, mm -hmm. and um, I kind of wanted it because it had a really nice set of fat tires, which the tires are under this GMC Jimmy over here, and the motor I wanted to put in something crazy, and a 32 Ford was perfect for a blown top fuel Hemi. Yeah. That's going to be Senior's build. That would have been something he would have been really down with. I think I'm a... I don't know what kind of tires I want to do on it, though. I could either go fat pro street or kind of go with some... Um, not skinny, but a little bit fatter uh, baby moons because the car is going to go black with a red interior. I could do red baby moons on it. You do what everybody used to do back in the day and just put NASCAR slicks on the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many people I, did that? <laughs> I do have a set of Goodyear NASCAR tires down there with the black NASCAR rims. I don't know if they'd be a 10 inch or a 12 inch, but they make a decent looking low profile ish kind of slick, not a big tall thirty two inch, you know? Yeah. I've seen people do that with the NASCAR tires, use them for like kinda not fat drag tires, but more like a small tire drag. That and you can just scrape the good year off and then just have it a plain tire. I know the feeling Turn them inside out. What's up, yeah. Tim Custom? Turn them around, put the letters on the inside. Yeah. That's what we did in the in the 70s when they wanted to put white wall tires on your car. You just turn the white walls in. Uh oh, Jeff fell off the wagon. That's all right, Jeff. Don't feel bad. I bought two kits today, so yeah, I've seen them them um dirt track. Have pretty nice and dirt track models have pretty nice fat tires on them. Yeah, Joe, Joe Barbado and one of them I bought just to get a one decal out of. And then, of course, there's the fact that the What's up, Joe? Uh, 66 Nova Pro Street and the 67 Chevelle Pro Street both have incredible tires in them. Uh, the yeah. Nova having just slicks the chevelle having slicks and treaded yeah i have a lot of those and, and DLP slicks yeah yeah well, and yeah because this is the uh one of the rear end and tires out of one of my multiple of the nova kits i have a stack of those yeah, yeah. i need uh, the only issue with the chevelle ones are the tires are really nice but um I have to find different rims for them because them rims that come with that Chevelle are ugly as hell. No, you don't need uh, to find different rims. You just take your hobby saw, you cut the the actual face of the rim. Yeah, you off. use the. Yeah, you yeah. use the. Watch the back off it or whatever it is. Sand the, the back off. Sand the the Chevelle wheel from the back until the the web comes out, and then you glue on whatever whatever yeah, wheel you want to put in there. To, 
you don't need yeah. to sand it. You just set it flat on the table, lay your knife flat with the blade touching it, and then just spin it around, and it'll make a perfect mark. And then you just cut it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's usually what I do, but like I said, it's fine. And then there's the fact that I want to do that with these wheels from the Nova. The Chevelle tires will fit on these wheels because the tires are the same size between the two kits. Yeah. If you like the Krager style wheel. Yeah, that was the nice part about Ravel Monogram. Man. You just call that 1 800 number, tell them the part number, and they'd sell them your address. And two weeks later, it'd be at your house, man. <laughs> Less than two weeks, usually. Crack a windshield, it's on the way. Break a bumper or a suspension part, it's on the way. <laughs> yeah. That's what I did on this one, Jimmy. I just sanded the back of the Chevelle wheel until I got down to the bead lock. Yeah. And I just glued, uh, I wanted to use Craigers on this car, so then I glued the Crager on the back of it. Oh, my nice. God. Yeah. Let me show you. I've done that with the. Uh, and I used the, the street selects on this one. The you DLP can also. Slicks. You can also bypass all the work and just like your 29 Ford AMT truck. It has them yellow factors or whatever that are pretty thick, like almost a half inch tall. You can use them as well for the fronts. That's what I did with this, Jimmy. Yeah, because I don't like those Chevelle wheels either too much. So that's what I always do with them. I just sand them up. Put some 200 grit sandpaper on the workbench. It takes about five minutes and sand it. So that way here's, here's an example of what you were talking about um bob they're not complete but that's a, that's the uh chevelle with the with the chevelle rim with the back cut out of it yep yep and you could do the same thing with the funny car ones or even the but sprint car. I'm going to show you while, while I'm up there. This is, uh, let me get my head over here and kind of block this light enough that we can see this. Maybe. That looks like the this tread tire out of the Chevelle kit. And yeah. Mickey, um, Mickey Thompson tread. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm trying to do this to where it'll show up, where it's not actually going to. Focus on me. Okay, so that's a Chevelle treaded tire. That's what's going up underneath that GM, that K5. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Where'd you get that tire from? That's a, um, that's a resin, a resin tire, resin rubber. Yeah. Because they still, they squish. They ain't got much squish to them, but they got squish to them. About four. That's, um, that's right. Because they came from uh, they came from competition resin. You know, anybody's that's got it. any of them dirt track sprint cars with the wings on them? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If, if you yeah. ever find them at garage sale, flea markets, or anywhere else, or cheap, cheap at shows, both of the smaller tires are nice for like the back of the T bucket mm -hmm. and the other big ones are nice for your pro touring street cars because they're treaded yep. that's, what that's what i did with these these is this is the rim or what the front of the fat from um that uh top fuel car and i cut the back of it off put a mag on it yep. and then hang on let me turn the light on this kit what I'm about to do is going to look weird because I had an original idea for this and the idea never happened and it's still set up to where I could do the idea. But I was going to have it to where the front opened up and that just never happened. So it just was not glued on. Yeah, you can see how fat them tires are under this Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's 572. Yeah, I still one of these days might make the hinges. Because I would like to have it displayed like that. But I never made hinges, so I just got sat on there and put on the shelf. Yeah. 
hinges are simple. Mm -hmm. And the frame, actually, from this is um, out of that uh, F100 Foose kit. I shortened it. And, Where'd you go, bud? Uh, the rear axles out of a 70 and a half Camaro. This was a parts bin build. Turned out pretty good for a parts bin build. It's dusty. Mm. Uh, eventually, I might still make a hinge for it. One of these days. Set the Mustang back up there. Damn, yeah, I need to clean that. Damn, yeah, I need to clean everything in here. Gee. Don't take Dude. long for them to get dusty. Believe me, I don't. Ow. That is smack my head. Especially if you live in a dry environment. Oh. All the sanding and all that stuff you do, yeah. Well, these are in a case in my room. Yeah, even in a case, if it's not airtight, dust will get in it. I did finish that up finally. Oh, that's cool. Uh, one door's broken, so let me get that. Okay. You can't beat these cases. I got them for free on the side of the road. Uh, that 3500 kit. Rims are from Joey. Um, this is the uh, the frame and suspension are out of that big game kit. Uh, 3D printed Duramax. Oh, nice. I got on a kicker for doing dualies for a while. I did this one, and then I did the 72 dually with the 12 valve in it. And a big rig style fuel tank. That's not two yeah. big rig style fuel tanks. That is well, nice. That frame and those wheels are off a 32nd scale uh, big rig die cast. Ah, okay. 25th scale cabs are perfect on those frames. I have five of the one. 120 the 132 scale snap tight semi truck that I yeah. use for exactly that or making rollbacks. Yep, and 12 valve swapped it. Um, made a hood stack out of a pen, it's a little bank pen I got a cut in half. The hood's a pain in the ass to get on this damn shine. Yeah. Yeah. Then nice. I'll. I'll I don't remember. I found the shifter somewhere. You ain't gonna be able to see it, but it's a skull head shifter. I don't know where I got that from, but I want another one. Right? Front ends. Slacked it out. Oh, uh, these these two are the two I'm most proud of. Yeah. I do my uh, diesels. This one though, I need to fix the. Um. It, I did it a while ago, and it's not very good glue I'm using. And that freaking glue melted and warped my homemade flatbed. Uh, I just took two uh, bed bottoms and glued them together. Yeah. I think a bed from one of these trucks would fit on the back of that. So I might have to get another one of these for a bed. Redo this truck. Yeah, this truck was finished and I dropped it and kind of just threw it back together and I need to redo it now. Been there, done that. You can uh, buy a sheet of that uh, truck bed flooring ribbed sheet. Yeah. yeah. You can buy sheet styrene with just about any texture on it you want. That's what I mean. You can buy the, the truck bed floor. You can buy metal tin garage door or walls. You can buy anything, yeah. Diamond plate. I got a, a bunch of sheets of the diamond plate. Oh, yeah. I, I've got a bunch of diamond plate myself. You I've can always wanted to wrap. Up. I've always wanted to do like a Jeep CJ with all the diamond plate accessories that they put on them. Yeah. I'm a close case the, back the up. Wrapping the back corners and the side steps and just you about everything and everything that was freaking diamond plated. <laughs> Thank you. 
Close that back up. Y'all are tired of looking at my garbage. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was garbage to me, brother. Look, that, everything I was looking at was looking pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. they they look good on the shelf, but like the dually, um, I, mean, I couldn't get the transfer case to fit in it, so it's got a Bluetooth transfer case and shocks. Um, uh, there's some stuff where I, at the end of a build, I'll get pissed off from working on it and not do things, and I need to yeah. quit doing that because it bothers. It, I'll be showing it, and someone will say something, and I'll be like, "Yeah, fuck, I know." Star Siege. You you didn't show it in your cases, but I could tell it in your voice. You just shared your passion and your joy. So thanks for doing that. Yeah, those are the two. The three I'm most proud of is that big lifted square body right there was well that even, thing was wild. Even before you built those two, or even before you built the red one or the black slip nose thing each one of those was something you were proud of when you were done with it yeah. each one of them <laughs> you know? I do need to make those hinges for that Jimmy though I've been thinking about that I got the stuff to do it just never have yes it is Mopar Nut and like Mopar Nut says uh just for for that uh, flip up body, just just build yourself a real a rear bulkhead and pin it uh, pin it to the chassis and the body, and bada bing bada boom, you got a flip front. Yeah, just yeah. fill a hole at the tail end of each of the frame rails. Put a, a tube in there with the shaft going through it. Glue the tube to the body, and you're done. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. That's one thing I used to love the most is custom fabricating parts like that. Like the rear hinge system on the Wraith, it wasn't just a simple L bracket with a hole and a pin in it. It was a really big, massive sized hinge. Because of how it had to go in behind the tail lights and carry the top and bottom of the body, yeah, and, and have a, a a curve for the pivot, right? Yeah, it, it wasn't just hinge on a single point; it actually had to slide on a rail going up and down. Yeah. Now I managed to do it really well to the point where about seven eighths of the way up the bottom balance actually touches the tire yeah. and I didn't want to open that any further than it was because then ah! it would have affected the wheel art, you know, but I got it to the point where it'll actually open on its own and it'll hold its position with enough resistance yeah. to hold its own weight without having to put a prop rod in it. <laughs> yeah. But you should have seen me doing the math and, drawing this little box and then putting a point and then kind of spinning this piece of paper to see where it curves to and then drawing my shape within there and then double checking it and then transferring it to plastic and then making it work and mm -hmm. i had a blast do it. i mean it took me probably about two days to figure out the hinge yeah i managed to make it work and it's functional <laughs> <coughs> same with the front doors because of the hinge had to be up on the wheel arch mm -hmm. of the front tire, but there was so little room between the wheel and the body yeah. that I had to come straight out towards the door, then down, and then had to make sure that when I lift the hinge up, there was enough of a notch that the door could go up high enough to clear mm -hmm. the fender. Are you yeah. done? So, I mean, it got so thin. I'm like, man, if this goes any thinner, this thing just got to snap off. But I managed to make it structurally sound and fit, and it worked. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the major reasons why I'm leery of opening the doors on this 99 Street machine 
this 99 Colorado street machine because the front doors there's not a lot of room on the back side of the front fenders right there in front of the doors where the hinges would be yeah like i said there's no a pillar in it <laughs> to, to put a hinge plus the a the a pillar that's molded in is part of the door i'd have to build an interior a pillar from scratch for it yep and then to open up the third door on the passenger side the one that swings out suicide style there's even less room between the hinge edge of that door and the bulkhead of the cab than there is between the hinge edge of the front doors and the fenders and the fender well. So, you know, while I would love to open those doors up and hinge them, not a lot of room to work with for putting in the hinges. All right. And then you get two different types of hinge makers. One where the door comes out and mm -hmm. opens and the other where it actually pivots and the front of the door actually goes towards the firewall yeah you know it doesn't come out away from the body like most people would hinge them you know yeah and and that's the way i would hinge these doors i would hinge it to where like on a one-to-one -one 99 chevy silverado you yeah. the leading edge of the door slides in behind the rear edge of the front fender yep which means you have to mount the hinges to the interior tub mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I've, I've i've worked on them a few different times to where it's like go out and open the car door take a look at the c channel and the other c channel and where the two pivots are and that mm -hmm. little springy deal that clicks it at half open and full open. And, you yeah. Know, it's like, okay, the pivot needs to be closer towards the window crank than it does towards the front fender, you know, mm -hmm. which, which side, which direction, where's this pivot, you know? And yeah. What, once you look at a reality piece and then you transfer it to a plastic piece, it, it makes perfect sense and then it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. just, you're dealing with a very tiny space compared yeah. to a real car where you actually have enough room to put your hand in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And because of that very tiny space and the structural integrity of the materials you're working with, that just lends itself to being broken so easily that it's like, is it worth the risk of breaking my kit or getting my kit broken just to have the doors to open. Honestly, I I wouldn't on the Chevy truck simply because there's a million other bodies that are 100% easier. Yeah. Compared to all the extra work of making the inner pillar and then making yeah. sure that the bucket sits still and all the, the fab work that has to go into it. But yeah. If, yeah. if you're one of those that's not afraid to take a year or two to build an interior, let alone any of the other stuff you're working on, you know? Right. But if you're, if you're like me, where you build one at a time, I'd pass. I'd say, you know, I'll just, I'll just panel line it. It's all good. <laughs> but, I mean, the biggest reason why, especially on this 99, that I really want to open these doors is the interior tub the the molded in interior detailing on this particular kit is just absolutely superb i mean it's got the oh shit handles up in the head it's got oh yep. shit handles yep. that you up <laughs> in the uh the head the headliner yeah I've, I've built a couple of them they are pretty badass uh you, you know? want to show it off easier chop a moon roof into the top of it nah not on the truck <laughs> <laughs> it depends if you're going for a custom or a stock build. I was on a custom build, a motor over, but good. Where's my trucks here? Yeah, except this truck is getting the uh, the wedge bed of the racer's wedge. Oh, yeah, the the a moonroof wouldn't look too good in that. Okay. All right, all right. This this might or might not impress you at all. 
Ed, but uh, uh, Bob, if you want to share this. This is a Hot Wheels Chevy truck. Yep. Dooley. Yep. That I, I opened that the door wheels. on. That I opened no. the door on. Yeah. I, on, I on a fucking that. Hot Wheels, okay? Yeah. On a fucking Hot Wheels. <laughs> Yeah, I, I but this is out. this is the problem you're gonna have right here. Yep. This is why you have to build the interior A pillar version of it first. Yes. I mean, e even when it was done, this thing turned out freaking. I mean, these panel lines are tighter than the box line. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this fucker turned out really freaking awesome. Yeah. But as, as you can see in this picture, I start with two bodies. Yeah, so that I'll just I'll just trash everything on to keep the door, trash yep. the door of the other, keep the body exactly combine the leftovers. Yeah, exactly. I've, I'd seen someone do that with a Hot Wheels charger. Oh. It might have been you. Check check. Oh you know, yeah, I've got plenty of doors open on all of these. This right here, you could tell is a pop can. Uh huh. <laughs> this is the way the truck came from Matchbox. I I did a wheel swap on it with Hot Wheels tires. Yeah. But this is the actual body lines on there and everything. Oh, wow. All I, all I did was sat there with a toothpick and start molding all of this stuff to make my own little fenders, and they actually sit on the truck. Yeah. But like an off-road truck would, it falls apart. <laughs> you know? Right. This, this one used to have a big engine back here that came up over the top. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was cool, but I didn't care for it, so I made my own little box on it. And I made my yeah. own little fenders and shit. It looks pretty badass. <laughs> And this one, this was a flat nose semi, and this is the box of a Chevy truck, and this is a piece of aluminum that I made the hood out of. <laughs> oh, nice. It's wild. Yeah, this, this used to be a box truck is what this was, a flat nose box truck. And then you all know the freaking fire truck, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Here, here's another one of those custom-made hinges deal. <laughs> These are my, my truck collection. See, it's got the little box that I made all out of plastic and everything. And they all open up oh, and wow. close. Nice. This, this is my dresser. This is one of them massive freaking 110 scale motors or whatever out of Summit. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I need this to be in a car. I can't just have it by itself. So I built all of this out of freaking wood. These seats and the steering wheel are actually out of a Corvette, and then these are just RC wheels. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's a picture of the interior, all carpeted and flocked except for the vinyl part. Nice. That's wild. And this one used to have an engine sticking out here and the air cleaners up here. Yeah, so the smoothed. ice cream truck. Yeah, so I smoothed it all out nice and clean. Yeah, I got a I got a bunch of Hot Wheels and Matchboxes I've collected. Oh, got, the bus, the Hot Wheels City bus. Yeah, well, it's the the RV, but yes, I have yeah, a buddy who wants RV. me to use the Hess H E S S RV kits to make one of these, mm -hmm. but he wants the back of it to be a car hauler. I said, oh. if you can find two of them that are broke, I can make one kit like this. Yeah. But it takes two of them to do it. <laughs> and then, of course, I got the little fall guy. Yeah. And then my little mesher smith. <laughs> this is all custom made right here. Wow. Turned into a little little 4x4 four four monster. Okay, here we go. This is the woodies. As you can see, these are blue and this is tan. Yeah. Again, this is two kits to make one or two cars. Uh -huh. But I had to make my own center post, so I had something to hinge this on. Uh huh. And I used bare metal tape that tapes to this, comes out, bends around, masks back onto this, and then wraps around just so this has a hinge right here. Oh, wow. And as you can see, it works. Yeah. And then my favorite picture, these two. I did it in sepia. <laughs> oh, nice. I mean, for an old Woody's with steel wheels on it, these pictures just look perfect, right? Oh, yeah. And then, of course, we got other monster trucks. And then, uh, come here. 
this Chevy truck, I opened the hood, shoved the motor in there, cut the wheel wells out so I could slam it down. This was an Acceleracer that I smoothed out. There used to be a big hole in here and some other shit up here. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. This one was for a buddy of mine who actually had the Ford truck with a wooden box on it. And he gave it to his daughter. So I carved this little tiny freaking guitar. It was like a half inch tall from here to here. Mm -hmm. One piece of wood. And I sat there and carved the whole thing out. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, this is a Hot Wheel. You can tell that's not a very big. Yeah. I mean, that's less than inch and a half long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look at thing is tiny. Yeah. I, I got all kinds of freaking opening doors on little freaking Hot Wheel size stuff. So and I know if I could do it on a 164 scale, it's not that hard to do it on 124 with plastic instead of die cast. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what I was saying earlier about the the three different wheels from the Chevelle and the Nova. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the top wheel is the treaded out of the Chevelle. The middle shiny wheel is the slick from the Chevelle. And then the bottom wheel is the slick from the Nova. All three, the exact same size. Yep. Where's the Firestone? You need what the you, you need the yeah. treaded Firestone from like the Max Rat. Then you have all four. <laughs> I don't have that one. Mm. No, the only the only kits I have wheels this size out of or tires this size out of are the uh, sixty seven Chevelle and sixty six Nova Pro Streets. Of which I've got like four or five of the Novas and like seven or eight of the Chevelles. Yeah. So you're a Pappy Jr. Pretty much. <laughs> you know, I'm the same way. I've never actually built one of those Chevelles. I've always robbed parts out of them. Exactly. Same goes for the Nova. Well, Mopar Nut, I, I would definitely do all four doors on an Impala if they had a four-door Impala other than the 67 Supernatural. The Hot Wheels ones are all two doors. As far as the Impalas go. Yeah, I, I got no problem making a, a solid B pillar that goes from the roof to the floor so I have something to mount a hinge on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's like you say. I mean, the fact that you can do... The fact that you can do something like this where the doors open up on a 164th hot wheel with die cast means that 125th in plastic can definitely be done but you know it, it's like we said that the a pillar here i would have to construct an interior a pillar for it and then this this here is that's not a lot of room for hinging to make it to where this leading edge of the door slides into the trailing edge or underneath the right. trailing edge of the fender. And then here on the passenger side, there's even less room back here for this door to swing out the way it does on the one-to-one. -one. Well, normally they would, when you open the one door, the second one would open suicide sometimes. Yeah. On well, a four door, it would actually both open forward. But yeah, well, see, that's how this one. This is just the uh, the three door, right. and the, on the one to one, the the front door would open out regular, mm -hmm. and the rear door would open out suicide. Yep. yep, and it would house the whole the handle would that be... locks the two together. Yeah, and, and then it latches in the floor and the roof. Yeah, this latches to the floor and the roof, and then the front door latches to to the back door to the wing door yep. and the handle was on the side of the door yeah you open Set up outside the, yep. yeah my dad's 90s body was the same way yeah you use this handle to open the front I remember door. being a little kid thinking that was the coolest fucking thing and then on the inside edge on the inside edge in between the two door facings is where the handle would be to open up the rear door <laughs> 
I got a question for you, Ed. What's up? The windshield, does that go in from the outside or from the On inside? this truck? Yes. All the glass on this, on the 99 uh, Silverado Street Machine, all the glass goes in from the outside. All right. So if you only open one door, the driver's door or whichever, right? Uh-huh. You can set the glass in there, build an A pillar that would just barely let the glass rest on it. Uh huh. And make that look like the trim that goes around the window, and then cut your door open. Because then it would already be structured from the roof to the cowl. Mm -hmm. You know, and the glass is just sitting there to hold everything in place so it don't move. Yeah. And then you got basically what looks like the trim that goes around the window inside to hold the headliner in and the A pillars coming up. And the if you put the the visors up there or not, it's optional, but yeah. <laughs> with as much detail as in there, I, I wouldn't doubt there is some in there, but I think it does have visors. Doesn't it have like a, a ceiling plate thing? I've built two of them, but I don't one was the wave rider and one was just the truck, the four wheel. Seems seems to me there was like a like a pair of spotlights and a, a place to mount the, the rear view mirror up there. Look on the instructions. I don't know, that that 99 Silverado, I'm a little scared to get because I know what I'd do with it. I'd cut the cab in half and turn it into a slam to the ground single cab. Here we go. I know I could do it, but I'm a little scared to do it. <laughs> well, the the 99 uh, street machine, it's already lowered. Yeah, right. but I'd want it. I'd want a uh, single cab with some monster rims tucked up in there with like a Corvette motor up in it. Yeah, kind of like my my why, buddy's why, truck. Why would big... you want to put a Corvette motor in a Chevy truck when the Chevy truck motor is capable <laughs> of doing the same thing the Corvette is? Yeah, and uh, yes, it does, does it look cool with a. Uh, Yep, that's what I thought. It holds the visors and the rear mirror. Yep. Yeah. So and basically, if you tuck that up it. in there, then you just build your A pillar up to it yeah. so that it, it houses the A pillars with it as a single piece. That once you paint everything, then you can slide it all down in there as a unit. Yeah. Or just go back in and touch up with hand paint after, whichever. But, but the main thing is to support the roof to the cowl so it don't move right because you know as well as i do once you cut that door open that thing's going to be flimsy there ain't oh, a yeah. whole lot of rocker panel on it so you might want to restructure that as well yeah add a little bit of support in there yeah is yeah the, par, you don't build chevys because they're perfect the way you are you don't have to build them yeah the yeah these rocker panels they're they're not even an eighth of an inch thick right and that that that'd be another issue that i'd be afraid of just going snap well wow. just being yeah. this tiny little toothpick sticking out when you're trying to mess with stuff is gonna snap yeah <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> Same here, Ryan. I, I don't build Fords by choice. Well, and I, I know Mopar says he doesn't build Chevys, but he is a Mopar nut, and I love Mopars as well. Yeah. So I, I could totally see doing a, a four-door 71 Hemi Cuda wagon with all four doors and the trunk open. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Wrong. I like Mopars. I'll build a Mopar. I've got the uh, the Viper right here. Uh, <laughs> Have you ever yeah. seen my bowling pin? Uh -uh. I've got, I call I, mean, I call it half width is what I call it actually. Yeah. Where's where's my Mopars? But I've this, got two dot is... pickups I'm building. I've got a handful of chargers. I'm working on a dart. You know, I've got a duster sitting over there. Okay. I got no problem with Mopar. Damn it! It's them blue ovals that I won't touch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, check check out this Viper. This. This was one I built a long time ago that I, I called it the half wit 
but it's actually my bowling pin. Oh, now, wow. this, this was the first rendition of it, all right? It still has a Viper V10 in it, but it has the triple Predator carbs on there, all right? Wait, and, it's, and it's Pro Europe? Street. What's that? Is your front wheels on that one steerable? No, they're slightly turned. Oh, okay. Slightly turned. But here is when I went back and rebuilt it. Okay, see, this this is the original. Yeah. I cut, I put a piece of three-quarter inch tape from the nose to the tail and cut it away. And then sandwiched it all back together. Damn. All right. Including part of the frame. Some of it was here, some of it was there, etc. But it was such a shitty build that I wanted to go back, finish up some Bondo, do some more stuff. I used solder for my exhaust because it was so close to the frame I didn't have any room left, right? Yeah. This mm -hmm. intake with the supercharger is the 70 Chevelle. The monogram 70 Chevelle fits beautifully in here. A little bit of a gap, but I cut down the bottom, you know, mm -hmm. sand it down so it lays down in there further. Yeah. And I started working on the rear. And let's see. Let's... Now, now we're getting there. <laughs> You can see the nose looks so much better now than it used to. And then here you can see my windshield. I just cut it in half and glued it back together. Mm -hmm. I use that as a template to make a brand new one. And then this came out of like the circus wagon or something. It was just a tufted back of a seat. Mm -hmm. You can see it in there. And then this is my chassis. This is all Max Rat wow. 67 Chevelle right here. Coil springs, four link, well, triangulated, etc. This was a piece of uh, RC antenna clear tube that I just cut in half to make my underside drive shaft tunnel. <laughs> and then these right here are those plastic tips you get with your tester's glue. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just freaking cut the, the bulbs end off of it so I could put all four pipes in there and then I shove them into a piece of rod and then do another piece to my tailpipe. All right. There you go. And then here is the half wit now. As you can see, the tires stick out a little further and they're taller because mm -hmm. these are the funny car style. And these are also older style, funny car style front tires. But you can see it's got some ground clearance because it didn't tuck up in there as far. Yeah. But yeah, this you, is what I call half wit. <laughs> that, that's very cool. And this, Great, this is like that I love. This is not the only one of these either in my collection. Uh, oops, let's go up to Chevy's. Where Chevy's? Uh, oh no, it's in Tri Fives. Let me go back up here. We're squished it. This was the original version. And honestly, this thing looked like a limousine. A 55 Chevy looked like a limousine because it's skinny. <laughs> oh, wow. Again, this is three-quarter inches of tape cut out the middle of it. And as you can see, this was back way before 2015. This was when I took fresher pictures of it. This was just masking tape. To get the vinyl roof look to it you can see there was no interior in it but then i went and i tore it back apart and of course i used the viper chassis and you could tell this was just freaking make it work right mm -hmm. so i went and i painted this this dark metallic forest green with a uh, apple green or whatever it was and i found some badass rims for it the chevy rally type stuff Mm -hmm. And I, I blacked out all the windows because they were just, they were glue bomb to start with. And then I custom made a better chassis for it. And this is actually cardboard. This right here is actually just cardboard. <laughs> wow. That looks like a medium cardstock. Well, it's like the back of a notebook. Yeah. <laughs> But as you can see, once it's all painted, you don't really see any of that shit. <laughs> it's got a little V8 in it. You know, I started detailing it out, and it turned out clean. <laughs> that, that looks wild. But it's it's really skinny. 
and I mean really skinny. <laughs> Especially consider compared to oh a my god i five, right? Regular double nickel. Yeah, and here here's the two of them together, and there's the cop out right behind it. What this, scale are both those? These are both the 124 scale. This is the uh, AMT huh. Viper, and this is a monogram 55, like the Batman. For some reason, sitting on that table, they look big scale. Well, it's because there's all these Hot Wheels around it. <laughs> oh. Well, I said, you look big scale. And, I mean, they're, they're small compared to a freaking Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> And and I also have a Chevy truck that I did the same exact thing to as well, where I cut out three quarters of an inch, turned it into a little mini tow truck looking thing. You made a mater. <laughs> well, no, not well. Actually, I did, but not out of that Chevy truck. I used a '55 seven Chevy truck, mm -hmm. and from Mater's tales, when he was Captain America or whatever he was where he's uh, a light blue with the red and the white. Mm -hmm. I actually painted the eyeballs oh, it was on like the evil windshield. Canino. Yeah, I painted the eyes on the windshield. I painted the rims. I decked him out. And then, you know, I, I did a bunch of that shit just because I thought he was cute. And I had a, a glue bomb body that I didn't want to sand and repair and fix. I was like, well, fuck it. Let's, just, let's play with it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you, you sneeze at 50 miles an hour in that thing, and you're going to roll. <laughs> right? Yeah. When they're that skinny, man, yeah. Unless you're actually doing, like, the uh, CO2 car cartridge racers where they got the little pin on the bottom on a, on a string. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't going straight in that little car. I can tell you no. that. <laughs> Them back tires ain't got enough freaking... Well, they would have so much grip and torque to them that they would push the nose wherever they wanted it to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I thought they were cool. You know, they were just, you know, messing around with something that, what else am I going to do with it, you know? Yeah. Well, you, it, it's like you personally have said, there is no such thing as a dead kit. Yeah, Only there is no such thing. Changes <laughs> direction and use. I mean, like I said, if, if you handed me a body that you've been using for <coughs> spray paint testing for 20 years, right? It's probably coated to no end, right? Mm -hmm. I, I could cut all the body panels out and have a pile of fenders, doors, quarter panels, roof, dashboard, whatever. Spray them all with a little bit of rusty color. Sand them off like a little this? bit so some color comes back through and set up a freaking flea market. <laughs> a swap meet, you know? You mean something like this? Yeah. I could still do all kinds of stuff with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Aside from just paint mulling it. Right. Yeah, I could test make uh, aluminum door panels and trunk lids. And... Oh, yeah. Hoods and, you know. I've, I've made hoods plenty Oops. of times. Oops. One guy I had met at a car show, he had a 66 Charger, and I was sitting there talking with him, and he, and he had heard me say something about models, and he's like, so do you, you build models? And I was like, yeah, I build them. I do re, rebuild glue bombers and stuff, and he caught the word rebuild. And he's like, well, I got a bunch of kits. I'll let you have them if you can fix one in particular for me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, sure, you know. So the next day, I went over to his house, and he brings out this little uh, one of the flats that you get your canned goods in. Mm -hmm. it's not a box. It's just a flat, right? Yeah. And there was like five cars in there. There's the 66 Dodge Charger. And the only thing missing was the hood. And he said, you know, you can clean it up if you want, but it needs a hood. I don't know if you have one or if you need to make one. And I said, well, I'll look and see what I have. And if not, I'll make one, right? Yeah. And that was the car he wanted back. In the process, I got three 71, 72, and 73 Dodge Chargers, nice. along with the original MPC uh, Superbird. Ooh. And I believe it was 
Daisy Duke's car, but he had it painted black and white. To this day, I still have those models, and I never touched them. I never even wiped the dust off of them. I put them on my shelf and left them. <laughs> nice. And how I know it's a 71, 2, and 3 chargers because of the license plates on the car are molded in the number. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, these, these are not touchable to me. They're, they're old, ancient, somebody else's build. They're in good enough condition. They're mm -hmm. rough, <laughs> but they're there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and all I had to do was make a hood. <laughs> yeah. And on the uh, the Dukes of Hazard TV show stuff, the various kits that were released from the TV show, I would love, just absolutely love, for round two to repop Cooter's tow truck. Yep. Sam. Even if they came out I, with just I, the I, bed. Four of that kit. Even if they came out with just the bed and released it like they did with the, the racer's wedge and the camper. Right. Where it was just those two options. There was yeah. no truck in the kit. They could do that with no copyright whatsoever because it was a common style tow truck bed back in the day. Mm -hmm. Or they could just come out with the tow truck and not put cooter on the side of it, which we have, yeah. we, we have sources to get details made. Right. That's that's one of them kits I'd like to do too. And you know, and I'm not even looking for it for the cooters decals. I'm looking for it for the tow truck. Yeah. I just, I like that style of tow truck. Right. It does look good. I still can't wait till somebody comes out with the old power wagon. I want yeah. at least three of them. One for the white and red tow truck. Mm -hmm. One for uh, Casey David's or Stacy David's gears. His big freaking truck that he's got in the shop. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then a third one just to build stock. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. She's telling me she's ready to go to bed. Ah. Mm -hmm. You ready to go nine nine? Huh? Are you ready to go nine nine? She's going to sleep under your feet and snore for us? <laughs> oh, no. This, this is the pit. <laughs> no, this is the pit. She's actually just picked up a box that was in this room and she's toting it in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get off here, guys. I, look, I've enjoyed it. I have built the crap out of this bike tonight. I've actually got the shock together, but I got to paint it now. So Good to hear, Terry. Nice to see Sweet, you. Man. That looks good, bro. A little, little bitty thing, but it's it's uh I've got to do a lot of painting on it. Hopefully, I've got the actual rear end together now. Got to paint it. So yeah, here's the shot. There's a lot of paint to do on it. I'm gonna get it painted throughout the week, and we might be close to a final assembly on this thing. I hate that light back there. A lot of nice little detail stuff, man. Yeah, it's it's a lot. The bad thing is it's a lot of freaking painting on this thing. And when you put the body panels on it, you ain't going to see none of it. I, I wouldn't really <laughs> worry much about that because it's all part of the overall look. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you get it up there and you turn it this away and you turn it that away and you go, you didn't paint that. <laughs> you did it too. And don't be no to tell me I didn't paint it. Well, so. it, it really wouldn't matter because if it was sitting on a table next to five other bikes in the bike section and there was two more like it, somebody's yeah. going to say, oh, well, this guy spent the money on the photo X part and this guy bought this part. And yeah. You know, you're going to get overshadowed by that anyway. So it's kind of. Yeah, these, of these are the metal forks. I did the metal forks. That's the one I got from Plaza Japan. So yeah. that, they that come with looks nice. They come with the caps and all of that that goes on top the handlebars, and then um, that's cool. The actual chain, 
So. But see, if if that was sitting next to a model show and they were all nitpicking about, oh, you didn't buy this or that, yeah, they didn't ask you that it's your very first bike build. No. <laughs> you know? So yeah. how could they no. expect you to compete with the top-notch bike builders when this is your first one? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't really. bad thing is, is with that light, hang on, let me see if I can get up here and block it enough. If you actually look, look at it, the clutch mechanism there, it's like three or four different colors. Yeah, I see yeah. the red, the silver nuts, the gold plate, and then the yep. darker and then, outside. And then in the front, you got the part of the coolant across the head. And there's three different colors right here. And then you go over here to this side. And it's hard to see, but that little piece right there is blue. Oh, yeah, that little tiny. Yeah, it's like yeah. on a gold piece, which is up against the silver. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's got a little silver, like a nut that goes through. It's like a fitting. A red on the tip of it there, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, right up at the top of it, it is. But like I say, when you put all these body panels on here, man, it covers just about everything of it up so but i mean <laughs> look y'all seen it today y'all seen it today it's painted right <laughs> and uh, man, my OCD is strong enough that if i were to put that kit together without painting everything within a day of finishing the kit I'd have to tear the kit apart just so that I could. Yeah, paint everything. yeah you'd be going, why didn't I do that? Why didn't yeah. I do that? You know? It would drive me flipping bat yep. shit if I did. I bought, they was talking about the photo etch earlier. The photo etch for this bike is $42, okay? Whoa. So not only 42 bucks. Um, I bought this kit from Plaza Japan. It was probably 20, between 20 and 25 bucks. Of course, you know, you got to ship it. But then I went to the hobby shop and I bought $69 worth of paint for this bike. Mm -hmm. And then you bought the forks. <laughs> yeah, $10 for the forks. They were $9.94. But I mean, so I'm already bought, over a hundred bucks into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just to paint it, just to assemble it, you know, I mean, it is what it is, but I mean, I wanted to get the forks, so when I ordered the forks, I ordered the two egg planes to go because I wanted egg planes and ain't been able to get them, so, but um, hobby shop, I'll tell you, they can't get them, so, but they can get all kind of Gundams and stuff like that. Excuse me, that um, they get from Plaza Japan, so you know, and that's where you get the eggplants five dollars and 14 cents for an eggplant. Damn, but your, your FedEx, your beginning FedEx with those those two kits and this sport set was 26 bucks, so then you got to add the 26 in with the. Divided you know. amongst how much you bought. <laughs> yep, yep, that's what I do. And I've I've bought quite a bit of stuff from Plaza Japan. Uh, I've got a two forty uh, Fair Lady up above my head that I bought from them. It's a uh, I think it's a Fujini. Yep. So I've I've bought several things. I've got a um, over here. I've got the um, Liberty Walk. Uh, R34 Skyline, mm. which is a nice kit. Uh, they got some real good stuff. You just have to watch the watch where the the shipping changes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I actually will take and go in there, and I'll just I'll find six kits that I like, and I'll go in there, and then I'll start pulling a kit out that I don't necessarily like as much. Right. And then when when the shipping drops back, that's where I stop. So, yeah. yeah. But, but it is uh, what it is. Mopar nut? No, this this hobby ain't cheap. No, Just it ain't. I went to my uh, 
to my brick and mortar just right around the corner. Like I say, I could walk to it in like five minutes. I bought two sets of Pegasus wheels and tires. I bought a couple of packs of Detail Master uh, Photo Etch, um, two different sizes of Detail Master coolant hose, and six bottles of paint, a sheet of 15 thou styrene, and some uh, evergreen 318 right. tubes. And Here's $91. Mopar Nuts asking about the clutch cables and all of that. There's the lines right there. Yeah. So, and we're not through with it. It's got more, it's got more stuff to go on it. So it's actually on here, uh, Mopar. So we just, we're not completely through with it, but um, I mean, I've got all the body panels all painted up here and I'm I'm working on getting close to being through with it. But I mean, I'm just not not getting in any rush or anything with it, but still, you know, it it's it's went together so good, you know, because of it being a to me a uh, to me a kit. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I it's, agree. They're very well engineered. It's a it's a nice kit, and and like I say, I'm I'm just doing my thing with it, and we're gonna continue on till I get it done. And like I say, I'm I've got a few parts that Don's working up on. Um, I'm gonna put a five seventy two big block in this fifty six, and uh, the uh, gas are sitting here on the. Uh, little paint turntable thing here um my gas chamber 55 i gotta put a uh msd in and put an msd box in it so but anyway i'm gonna get out of here guys i don't mean to right, steal the show go. off of y'all just all right you gotta, get you gotta get up at five o'clock in the morning and it's gonna come quick have a good one time all right, catch y'all later. Everybody in the chat, catch y'all later. See you, brother. Bye. Bye. Yeah, good night, sir. Well. You too. Everybody. Bye. Yeah, like, like I said, man, I mean, this hobby is not cheap. Like I say, two no. sets of, wheels, two sets of uh, uh, photo etch. <coughs> two packs of heater hose in different sizes a pack of evergreen tube and six bottles of paint and a sheet of styrene 91 bucks yeah the closest i get to a hobby store is online if anything else is over two hours away and that's only a hobby lot <laughs> Dude, I've got a Hobby Lobby that's maybe a 10-minute drive. I've got a Michaels that's maybe a 10-minute drive. I got a brick and mortar that's a five-minute walk. <laughs> yeah, and see, to me, that just makes me jealous or envious because I have absolutely no access to that in my area. Yeah. I mean, if I wanted to build models out of trees, I got your ass beat. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. 75 square miles in any given fucking direction. That's nothing but trees and water, you know? Yeah. But when it comes to an actual store, that's 20-some miles one direction to a Walmart that don't even carry models and nothing oh, wow. else in town that even comes close. We used to have a Ben Franklin with a model aisle. That was freaking awesome. But they didn't have any hobby supplies other than, like, paint, glue, sandpaper, and you know, whatever testers offered at the time. So, yeah. And then, of course, there's the fact now that Walmart doesn't carry model kits or supplies anymore. Right. Oh, that that upsets me. Yeah. Because I used to go to Walmart every payday and walk out of there with three or four kits, four or five rattle cans, six or seven uh, 
little uh, square jar testers, you know. Yeah, and back in the day, the maximum was like 20 bucks. Yeah. And that was for a semi kit, usually. You know? Yeah. Otherwise, they were like 17 something, maybe. 16, 17 something. Last time I bought a model kit at Walmart, it was like 15 bucks. Yeah. When, when they stocked them. Not necessarily the center of the aisle version that they come out with now, but back when they had an aisle specific yeah. for them. <laughs> yeah, when they had the model kits and the puzzles and all that there on that same aisle and the RCs and everything, that the, the, the ready-to-go RC, when they had all that there on that same aisle, the off-the-shelf kits were like Twelve fifteen dollars a piece, depending on the kit. Well, yeah, back when we had our. Ben Franklin, you'd walk in and there's four rows wide plus the outside. And then the second line of rows, there was a gap in between them. And then from that second row back, there was three rows total, but that second row back, 75% of that one shelf was nothing but model kits floor to ceiling. And mm -hmm. then they had like uh, Estes rockets and some other shit on the far end. Yeah. I mean, it's still model stuff, but it was a total different style. You know, I mean, yeah. rockets, rockets are rockets to launch in the air. You know? yeah. but, I mean, they're still models. Yeah. They are still scale models. Yep. It's just, like, say, a completely different type of scale models. Yeah, they weren't plastic. <laughs> you know? I mean, they had a plastic nose, maybe a plastic wing or a base or something. But, yeah, they they weren't what I was building. <laughs> yeah, they weren't they weren't. Com Complete teetotal styrene, except for maybe a metal axle or here, or there, you know. Right. And as a, a car guy, rockets and planes never really thrilled me. And that was one thing interesting. They only had a couple of, I wouldn't say bigger scale, but bigger boxes on the very top. Mm -hmm. And that was the only place they had airplanes. Yeah. They had a couple of Italeri semis up there for a hundred bucks, ninety-five bucks, whatever they were. Yeah. Which which was about right for an Italeri. But everything else was Ravel, Monogram, or AMT. Yep. And I mean it was, you know, you'd probably see like three of a kit, maybe scattered about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like they had all three of them in one spot, you know. Every yeah. once in a while I would I, I had you know, we would just walk in there, and I'm like, yeah, I know I'm going to be here for a half hour. My mom's shopping, so I'll start organizing them, you know. Put these three over here, these two together. Put those four together, you know. Yeah. But that was just because I knew I was going to sit in that aisle forever, and there was nothing else in the store I cared about. <laughs> yeah. Although I did go back in the uh, fabric section a couple of times because I knew there was stuff back there I could use. <laughs> They had the better paint brushes, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of Italeria, I still got this 116th scale Mercedes 300 SL that my boss had gotten me for Christmas that I hadn't even touched yet. I mean, I opened it up. I, I basically did an unboxing of it. I don't know if I did the unboxing on my channel or not, but I unboxed it. I opened it up and I looked through it. And it's insanely detailed right. oh my god and i'm really looking forward to building this kit one because it is a larger scale kit and i don't generally build large scale i'm 24th 25th scale guy right two the fact that it was my boss that actually thought enough of me to not only give me a hundred dollar amazon gift card but to actually purchase this kit and have it shipped in and deliver it to me. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, how many bosses do that? Very how, few. Not mine. 
how many employers get to know their employees well enough to get a special lot personalized Christmas gift for. Yeah, I, I would have to say the odds of that are like maybe two percent. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it it's a rarity, very much so. So you know, yeah, the the three hundred SL Goldwing exactly, and mine's in one sixteenth scale. Now, does that got the uh, plaid luggage and everything that goes with it? I don't remember, and it's buried under a stack of other kits. Because so. I know there was a couple of kits back in the day that they had on the decal sheet, they had the luggage set. Yeah. That you could trim out, fold, and make like a paper box version of a, a luggage rack that would go in the back of like the Corvette. Yeah, the 58. That yeah. model had it. Yeah. yeah. I also want to say one of the... Uh, not Millennium, but the uh, Prestige Series AMP kits had it as well. I don't remember if it was the Jaguar. Wait, no, that would have been the Exotics, Monogram Exotics. Yeah. But I, I know there was a few of them that had it, and I always thought that was kind of cool. So on a 116 scale, you would think it would actually have the luggage. <laughs> you know? Like I still have it because it was red plaid, and I built the Mustang blue, or... Yeah. And it had some life magazine decals and stuff like that. Yeah, but know. see, that's the thing, Mopar. Back in the day, you couldn't 3D print stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could vacuum form because Hot Wheels Mattel had a vacuum form set. <laughs> but very few people were ever using that for anything other than Windows. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is nice that all these things are accessible to the hobby nowadays, but like, like you take a person like me who doesn't have the money to buy a 3D printer or have, have access to a hobby store anywhere near me, you know, I might as well go outside in the woods and cut down a piece of tree and start whittling away to make my parts, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's my best option because I don't have the money to do it and the distance is way too far to make it feasible. <laughs> you know? yeah. well, that's but, where the ship kit used to come. Yeah, yeah like an old Margaret Marvel ship kit, the hull was wood. Yep, and the boxes were pretty hefty too. <laughs> All the, uh... I mean, I've done pine box derby cars where you can make your own body shape design you want. Yeah. You know? You know, I've been thinking about doing a, a Pinewood Derby group build one day. I think it'd be fun. They have the kit, so all you got to do is shave and shape your body and yeah. paint it up, stick your wheels on it, measure the weight. And it would have it. to be, you know, I wouldn't, you know, it would have to be a What's regulation up, kit because obviously we're all old for Pinewood Derby. But Well, uh, another thing like that, I have a whole bunch of extra valve covers you know, that are one ofs that don't match anything I have. So I took some plastic tube and glued underneath a bunch of them and made the valve cover racers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, they do that at hot rod shows. So I'm like, well, what the fuck? I'll do this in 124 scale. <laughs> I mean, it's just as bad as power tool races. You know, where you get the skill saw, the sander, the drill, yeah. whatever. <laughs> like you yeah. plug it in on a fucking like 100-foot extension cord, and when it reaches the end, it unplugs and shuts off. But Yeah. <laughs> Some of that shit's freaking crazy, man. Or like a while back, I had gone to uh, Ollie's, and I picked up a food dehydrator that... It's just little round stack, little round discs that stack. Yeah. And it's got like five discs in it. And I cut the the bottom out of three of them. So you had the height. So that I could have the height for putting like a body in it. And I took one 
I took one of the two that I left the bottom on and then I glued the outer ring of one that I got the bottom out of onto it. I used super glue to glue it together. Yeah. And then I took the second that I'd left the bottom plate in or the bottom grill in. And then I glued the other uh, the other uh, rings that I outer rings that I'd cut the plates out of. I glued that to it. And I now have a dehydrator for putting my parts in. <coughs> <coughs> when I, regardless of whether I'm hand brushing, air brushing, rattle canning, you know, right. I can now plug this guy in and turn it on, stick my parts in there, and a quarter of the time later, pull them back out and they're dry and ready to go. Can we go back to multi-screen there, Bob? Oh, I'm sorry. Ever since Terry left, it's been us watching you. <laughs> we could have said something sooner, but we were also watching. <laughs> right now, she's either me or Ed, so. Right. Yeah, these are the uh, these are the grills that I cut out of the out of three of the stackable rings. So you know what you can do with them, right? I saw a starship. Yeah, in the making there. No, you just go back to the hobby store. You buy three of them clock making kits and then some numbers, and yeah. then you sell them for fifteen bucks each. <laughs> here's one of the two that I left the bottom the, the bottom grill in with two of the outer rings super glue together, and that that's my deep one for putting the bodies in. And then here's the remaining with the grill still in it and one ring glued to it. And that's for putting just about any and everything else in. Yeah, smaller parts, yeah. Yeah, if I ever get space again, I wouldn't mind having a dehydrator for that. Even though most of what I paint, I don't need it, but there are stuff that I do. Yeah. And when I've got it all stacked together, it's not too very tall. Hmm? So it really doesn't take up a whole heck of a lot of space. Yeah. A circular form of a one foot square. Basically, yeah, a little bit more than a foot. Yeah, it's about 14 inches, maybe. <clears throat> but yeah, I would love to get myself a good uh, 3D resin printer with a large build plate. With a really long height uh, axis on it as well, so that I can uh, 3D print really big files. Now, granted, that'd take a lot of resin to do and a lot of time to create the print, but it's still, or I could print, I could get, say, a steering wheel file. And then I could just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and print 20 steering wheels in a single print, you know? Right. Or get a bunch of different uh, motor STLs, engine STLs, and I could print four or five engines at once, you know? I well, mean, well, here's the deal. 
if you do the math on how much you spend on 3D parts in a year. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, let's just say you spent 500 bucks on 3D printed parts from other people with shipping. So 400, 400 January, bucks will probably get you a, a cheap 3D printer. <laughs> yeah. Just from January 1st till now. I could probably say I've spent at least five hundred dollars in uh three D printing parts. Okay, then save the money and buy the printer. <laughs> right? Yeah, it, I mean it, it yeah. definitely I mean Butch Butch will tell you he went from single minded building one project at a time to having a three D printer, having multiple projects and a second printer. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, so I mean, it, it will spiral out of control on you. You'll oh, end yeah. up printing more than you build, and then you look at Don. If it wasn't for him gluing some blocks together, I don't know what he's built lately. <laughs> he's printed yeah. a lot, but <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I wouldn't go advertising to anybody that I'd had that I had the three. Well, it wouldn't matter. You'd be printing that much for yourself. True. That you would spend 75% of your free time printing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, slight, getting the, the files ready, doing the, the slicing and all that so that I could print them. And then I'd get them all loaded up into the printer, get the print started, and then I'd go to working on my kit, getting it ready to receive the parts that I'm in the process of printing. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. I mean, to me, it's it's not a step in the model building process I care for. It would obsolete all of my 60 drawer bins full of parts is what it would do. I mean, just, just the one that I have engine blocks in, there's probably a good 75 engine blocks in there. Right. And I can build LS out of a Chevy 350 block. Mm-hmm. I mean, who's who's actually going to look at the block and say, well, that's not the right motor mountain, blah, blah, blah. Get the yeah, fuck out of my right. engine bay, damn it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Slam the hood on your fingers. Go away. Let's yeah. <laughs> get freaking coil packs on the valve covers. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. That's like the uh, mid-late 80s third uh, Camaro kits. The ones that come with the TPI. Yeah. The if you read the literature on the kit, most of those are advertised as being 305s. Right. But on the one to ones, you take two one to one third gen Camaros, both with a TPI. One's got the th TPI 305. One's got the TPI 350. Hey, oh. Cars next to each other, raise the hoods up, and start measuring the outside dimensions of the engine. Zero. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you ain't got a bottle of rivet, stop rivet counting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? On the one to ones for the third gen Camaro that came that when they introduced the TPI, the only way you can tell the difference between a TPI 305 and the TPI 350. Is to check your VIN code. Well, I mean, it's it's no different than me putting a 70 Chevelle supercharger on a freaking Viper V10. Yeah. It's only got four intake runners and the V10's got five. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. It fit under the hood. <laughs> right. I mean, I didn't want to leave the hood Viper flat. I wanted to stick the supercharger through it so it had that, oh, menacing look to it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And see, I'm not a, I'm not afraid to break the rules and destroy the rivets. You know, I yeah. enjoy that shit. <laughs> that's that's show rod 101, man. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it, this kit, right? The cab that this kit goes to, or the kit that this cab goes to, the kit belongs to me. Yep. I'm gonna build this kit the way I want to build this kit uh -huh. i'm not going to build this kit to please you or bob or jimmy or 
anybody else. We're I'm fine. See so you fine, me. please. No, I'm <laughs> I'm going to build it to please me, make me happy with it. Yep. I'm the one that's going to have to look at it every day, sitting up here on this shelf once I get done with it. Speaking of, when you put that body on the frame, how far up and underneath does it go? Does it go up above where the rocker arm or the rocker panel would go? Because I think you kind of have to spread the body a little bit or over the chassis plate, don't you? I'm just wondering how thick you'd have to get away with without going too thick to actually get it to snap back over to reinforce the rocker. Yeah. No, the the chassis plate pretty much fits flush with the rockers. The, it doesn't go up in there just a little bit? No, not really. Mm. That's sketchy. I mean, it's... Mm. It's sitting up with with it butted up against the very bottom of the bulkhead. It's it doesn't hang down over too far, does it, for the rock? No, uh -uh. In in a way, that's kind of good because then you'd have to build a an L bracket or something to tie the frame to the body. Yeah. See. So when the door's open, you'd have your space. But yeah, it's it's right there. Yeah. You actually, if you cut that part off of the chassis pan and glue it to the body, then cut your door open. <coughs> that might work. You know, I mean, make it actually a floor pan in the body. Yeah. To tie both rockers together. And then you're just basically Peppers. setting the frame back down onto it where it belongs. Yeah, because uh, I mean that's a lot of work to to secure that so it don't snap. <laughs> but that's the last thing you want to happen is that the body snap. Yeah, there. I mean, it, yeah, you got the tail of it in the way, and then it goes to glare. But yeah, but yeah, I think if you cut that L shape off in a in a way where you'd have the room. I mean, you can almost actually pit, fit a piece of styrene in there. Yeah. There's like a valley. Yeah, when, you, when you've got the body off, I mean, it's got this little, almost a groove. Yeah, like a little valley almost. Right here. Yeah, but if you, that's if, also where uh, the door cards ride as well, so... Right, and that's what I mean, because once you have the door open, you need that for the door to land against. Yeah. You know, for the rubber seal and everything to keep the wind out and whatever. But, I mean, that's that's all part of building the door jams and everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because once you cut out a door, you, you got to... You're not done. Jam. You're not done. <laughs> you still play and all that, because... Otherwise, you're just going to have these big old gaping holes in it. Wait a minute. That ain't right. Right. Yeah, and see, this this is all that forethought planning stuff that needs to go on before you even take that first cut. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes you need to make the first cut to figure out what your next step is. But it but doesn't do hurt to know what yeah. is really there before you go that direction. <laughs> exactly. And... Even if you do need to go ahead and make that first cut to start being able to see what needs to be done next, you still need to be thinking about the possibility, thinking about what the one-to-one -one looks like exactly. when you go to open up the door. What's the inside edges of the door look like versus what's the inside edges in the door opening of the body look like? You know, you, you need to know this stuff and be thinking about this stuff. And you need to know how far from the inside of the door to the inside of the floor to know how wide of a piece you need under the door panel. Yep. <laughs> I've had that problem, too, where it was short and you close the door and you can see light through there from the other side. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Need to go thicker. <laughs> yes, sir.
but see there there you could take a 3d printer and the file of a real car door mm -hmm. which obviously they don't have unless you got a 3d scanner or something but yeah or yeah. you're really good at taking measurements and utilizing blender <laughs> right you know Wait. that's that's one thing i find in my video game world that i wish some of the people would transfer into the model world more is like the the uh forza horizon 5 type game files for the cars and stuff well there's not just forza it, well uh, yeah. grand theft auto need for speed uh gran turismo my garage uh, car mechanic simulator right mm -hmm. i know a bunch of the mod makers for those games that take the files they go into blender they do all this stuff they create it from scratch right mm -hmm. those people if they had any idea of the 3d printer stl files and the model building would fucking blow the doors off a of freaking round two. Oh yeah <laughs> You know, because they're building the cars they want to see in the game that I don't even see in model kit form. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like the only uh, current gen... Uh, which one's the two-door? The Charger or the Challenger? Charger is two-door... Or Charger is four-door, Challenger is two-door. Okay, so... Charger is the police car. Yeah. So the only current gen challenger that i've ever been able to find is a snap tight yeah or the pre-painted body which becomes a snap tight curbside yeah yeah and i don't i don't like snap tights i don't like curbsides oh i'm muted didn't didn't amt have one with a full engine uh-uh uh -uh. you know i like to they're all snaps. Full engine, have a removable hood, chassis, you know, the whole nine yards. I want to build my model kit. Yep. Right. And can't find one. And I want to build that two door Hellcat. Man. Well, I, know that, I know they do have that in a 3D aftermarket. I've seen plenty of demons and all kinds of other shit thereof with and without wide body kits and the motors and the chassis and all that stuff yeah. over the years but I, i'm not a modern car guy at all i mean i've got two of the uh 2017 camaros i've got the corvette c7r And uh, HPI, Chris over at HPI Guys recently did a, uh, a shot test build of the current gen Corvette. That, mm -hmm. And he didn't paint it or anything like that. He just glued it together. Yep. And even just bare naked glued together, that kit looked just phenomenal. And yep. I was, Ooh, I can't wait for them to put that yep. one. I think it's a Ravel. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ravel. Ravel mid-engine Corvette. Mm -hmm. I, I am so anxious for that kit to come out. I'm ready to do it orange and black. I'm thinking matte black. See, for me, the 78 pace car, anything 83 and older, I'm okay with. Anything 84 and newer, I don't even care to think about Corvette whatsoever. I can care less yeah. about mid-engine or 9,000 horsepower or last Z01. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Yeah. I don't care about the new Camaros. Every freaking car out there is based on the freaking Camaro. It's me, the GTO, the Chevelle, the Trans Am, the whatever. It's just a fucking Camaro. I, I got sick of it. The Mustangs, obviously, a Ford stuff. I'm not interested at all. Yeah. You know, from, from 84 and newer, there really is very little, if anything, out there I care for. I mean... I can say like an 86 Grand National because it's mm -hmm. still GM square body cars. Yeah. But when it came to the Corvette, nope, I lost interest in that body style and forward. I have nothing, no respect for any of it. Really? Yeah. yeah I, I, like I can care it. less about the freaking motors either. <laughs> I like that supercar look for the vets. 
Well, Corvette I is a, a, a super. I pull up into a parking lot and I see a current vet sitting there, and I start to mistake it for a McLaren or something. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Let's see. I'm I'm just not that big into the supercar stuff either. Ooh, I I can, I, I can care less oh, about yeah. Lamborghinis and Ferraris and McLarens and the newer I, I know Lambos, what they are, I agree. and I I can respect that they're designed to go high speeds, but there's never going to be a spot in my life where a high speed is something I'm going to do. Yeah. What well, Lambos, I agree with that. 65 is my range, you know. If I'm on the freeway, I might be lucky to go 75, 80. Yeah. Anything beyond that, I got no use for it. I don't go drag racing. I don't go racing. I don't have track days, you know. And if I did... It would be a Saturday night dirt track sliding sideways in a hobby stock. Right. <laughs> you know? So none of that stuff thrills me any. And if I'm going to spend 70 grand on a Corvette, I can spend 20 grand to build myself a show rod. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it would be way more my thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's quirky, you know, it's wild, not- it's conversation, I mean- it's whatever, but it's. To me, all that Lamborghini, supercar, Corvette stuff is just pompous. Look at me. It's a status thing. I've and got more money than I've got brains. You know. Yeah, and none, none of that is appealing to me. Not a bit of it. And, you and know I know what? it's a lot of if people. If I could afford one, I'd have one. <laughs> just because you can afford a Ferrari doesn't mean you can afford the freaking maintenance. <laughs> True. Know? I mean, True. I found that out with a Cadillac. But I also found out that a Cadillac is a fucking GM with a Chevy 350 I put in. <laughs> yep. But yeah, no, none of that modern stuff thrills me. And it really pisses me off when somebody with a brand new C8 Corvette pays $75 for insurance and I have an 83 Cutlass and I got to pay $175. Right? What the fuck is this shit? Well, it's because yeah. your car is a tank. Well, it's not my fault you drive a piece of fucking plastic. Right? <laughs> yeah. or, or better yet, yeah. my 94 Chevy 1500. Bare minimum state required liability. Guess how much? 150. 240. Not quite. A little That's what the, uh, 200. 185. On my 2003 Silverado V6 two wheel drive, it's $240. Yeah. Well, you're also younger. Yeah. So I'm on my dad's plan, though. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's still a freaking um, age under. range. Until you're over, what is it, 24 or something like that? You're still in, or get married. Yeah, you're still in an age bracket. (laughs) You, right now, as young as you are, you are in the most expensive to insure age bracket, period, bar none. Which is why you should get a muscle car. (laughs) (laughs) Red one. There is a beautiful 85 IROC on Marketplace right now. I'm more not going to afford it, Yeah, when they know that you're young, dumb, full of cum and drive a hot rod, they're just going to rape you for every penny they can get out of you. Oh, yeah. 60, and it and they're going to wear a 60-grit sandpaper dildo. They're not going to use KY, and they're not going to give a reach around. Mm-mm. And they're not even going to warn you when it's going in. Nope. <laughs> and before you get finished, they're already done. <laughs> And they ain't going to kiss you, and they ain't going to take you to dinner, and they ain't going to call you in the morning. So don't nope. I can get your wet dream hopes up. <laughs> That's a play of shit right there. I don't care who you are. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like I say, I mean, I'm fitting to be 47. Got a clean record, clean driving record, you know. I drive a 94 350 V8 four speed automatic two wheel drive Chevrolet 1500 two door extended cab. 
and I pay a hundred and eighty five dollars a month for bare minimum state required <laughs> liability insurance. Yeah, that's just out. So you guys are gonna hate me then. You drive an eighty seven Chevy Century, pays fifty four dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a 2017 Ford Focus, and I pay $600 a year for full coverage. Wow. Do you do, you do that biannually or all in one lump sum? Uh, they let me pay it in 10 payments, so I pay it's like $70 a month for 10 months. So I was going to say, okay, I know I'm the market, but actually it's more like $700. Because I, I know if you pay all in one lump sum, there's a discount. And yeah, biannually, and it's set up that way, and you pay all at once. It's a discount. Yeah, if I pay it all at once, but I usually don't have seven hundred bucks extra bucks laying around, so I pay the ten yeah, payments. I don't, I don't. I don't know anybody who does other than tax time. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, yeah, but so yeah, after the, the uh, courtesy fee, that's what they call it. It's right at seven hundred dollars for full coverage. Jeez. <laughs> I wish. But I've been with the same company for 30 years and haven't had an accident. And I don't know how long. Well, that's good for you. I'm not jealous by any means. I mean, that's good for you. I don't drive very much either, so. Oh, shit, I do. I put about, the only accident I've been in, I paid for it cash. I think I put like 3,500 miles on my car last year. Shit. But I don't go anywhere because I'm stuck home all the time. I'll put. I go to the doctor's office and the grocery store. That's about it. Go to Atlanta once a year. That's half of my mileage right there is driving to Atlanta and back. I bought my truck January of last year. Had 143,135 somewhere around in there, miles on the odometer. Just over a year later, I'm already at 167,000 and some. I drive a lot for work. <laughs> to say the least, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll generally, I generally put 350 to 400 miles a week on my truck. When I was working, I would do that. Yeah, because it was 50 miles a day to work. So it was 250 miles every week just for going to work. Yeah. Since I'm not working anymore, it's, yeah, my, I've dropped down. Maybe maybe on a high year, I have put 5,000 miles on the, on the car. But on a high oh, wow. year. Yeah, I do that in just a couple of months. <laughs> And on my black car, on my 2007, I didn't even put a 1,000 miles on it last year. Oh, wow. Well, that yeah. helped depreciation. That's a oh, 07 what? It ain't worth nothing no more. It's just my spare car. The time I drive it is when the other one's in the shop. That may be, but the fact that you're not putting any miles on it, that helps keep what little bit of value it still has, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, plummeting even further. Well, what kind of car is the 07? PT Cruiser. Ooh. I kind of like the PT Cruisers. Or at least oh, they're, they're great. great. This one's I just like weird cars, so I love PT Cruisers. Especially the ones that had that fake-ass wood paneling on them. Right. Yeah, the I like the ones, the, uh, the GT ones that had the... Uh, vinyl flames on the side yeah well it's like those and the chevrolet ssr you know the was, ssr is cool the ssr is cool as fuck the I ssr want, was like a modern day el camino yeah i wouldn't want it was, it was not an el camino it was a panel man <laughs> I well, that's the hhr yeah well, the okay HHR yeah, yeah panel man one the ssr was the el camino the pickup truck yeah. Yeah. Top pickup truck. The mini mini pickup. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Because and I I never test drove an HHR, 
but I did test drive an SSR and I could not put the seat back far enough to be comfortable with my long ass fucking legs in that. Yeah, my dad hated Chrysler's, but he tried the HHR and he couldn't drive it. My mom liked my car, so she that's why he they started buying PT cruisers too. Yeah. Whereas with the PT cruiser, as small as it looks on the outside, oh they're huge inside. Oh yeah. Oh, they're ginormous. I'm a big dude, man. I'm I'm pretty comfortable in my um I was pretty comfortable in my ex girlfriend's PT cruiser. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, the PT cruisers, they're huge on the inside. Mm. But the Chevy SSR and HHR? Shit. No. Well, they're easy to work on, too, because they use the neon drivetrain. Of course, they're not making either one anymore, so now parts are getting hard to come by. Yeah. Plus, the the Chevy SSR, HHR, they handle like shit. They look like they would be fun as all hell to drive. Now. Now, a little Mini Cooper? Oh, shit, yeah. Those are fun. Mm. When they claim in their advertising that a Mini Cooper has go-kart-like handling, <laughs> they ain't fucking joking. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker will turn on a dime and spit out nine goddamn cents change. Nine and a half cent. <laughs> Any of you happen to have the, I believe it was 2009 Dodge Magnum kits from Ravel? No, no, I, no I, but I'd love to Pro Street one. Right? I got the Chrysler 300, though. I want to make that into a limo here eventually. Interesting, Mike. Nice to know that. <laughs> Push the front of the block forward into the radiator. You got to move the radiator around. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just put the core support in backwards. It'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Mini Mike, just imagine if you'd have taken a Lambo V12 to try and put in that 54 Hudson. Think of how much modifying you'd need then. Yeah, you just wouldn't have a back seat in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's rear engine. Well, rear doesn't rear. have a back seat, not with those tires. <laughs> yeah. Not with the tires he's running on that bitch, you know. Oh my god, yeah. That's actually this tire. Yeah, the Magnum kit that I was just talking about. I, I built one. I would love to get another one of them. It is a modern car, but I like the look of the car. Yeah. I was just looking through my pictures, and I think that's kind of the direction I'm going with this one already in my head. So I'm thinking a deeper burgundy-ish red, the white top and the white interior, but I'm debating if I want to do white or not. I wouldn't mind going cream, but I know my cream doesn't size me. Really well. Oh, so you are actually able to get a rear seat in there, Mike? It's not as rearward as it once was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always make a new package tray. That's not a big deal. <laughs> <coughs> no, because I think his tires are like just... Uh, hair's breadth away from the uh body panels themselves on the on those rear tires yeah he's using the the jada tires <laughs> yeah. they're massive they stuff up so far up under there that with as low as he's setting the stance on that thing the top of the tread on the rear tires damn near to rubbing on body panels what do you mean rubbing? They're glued to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it were a roller, they'd be rubbing. <laughs> the rear deck can now hold only one U.S. stamp. <laughs> <laughs> it better be a forever stamp. <laughs> That's funny as hell right there. 
How much space you got between the tires? Barely enough for the drive shaft. It rubs on both sidewalls. <laughs> I've thought about using them funster style tires to do something like that. Put them as close together as I can and just have a drive shaft sticking out of them. <laughs> you know, like the gypsy wagon or something like that, where they got that real wide two piece tire. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're bigger than the ones he's using, but just have a drive shaft sticking out. That's all you need. You ain't going to see no pumpkin in there anyway. <laughs> There's Mike. Yeah, just. Oh my God, he did get a back seat in that thing. Damn. Fairly close to the factory location. Oh, so, yeah. That rear package all back in here. It's gone. Yeah, it is gone. It's gone. Package tray, what package tray? Well, let's just say when you do burnouts, you get covered in looking tar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to. That's looking sharp, though, dude. I like that interior. Cool. Hang on, I'm doing both here, so I'm going to get back beat if I'm not careful. Cool. I'm surprised it doesn't have a roll bar. Ah, there you go. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Yeah, the, I was able to save the back seat for sure, but what you can't hardly see or tell is I had to build a tunnel, which you may have to say from underneath. Because whoever said it is 100% right. Just enough for that differential and two <laughs> makeshift troll arms. The truth is the subframe for the axle is glued directly. <laughs> Yeah. Solid mount. Hey, let me take tires off and I'll show you. It doesn't have two coil springs. It's only got one that's as big around as the pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an airbag. <laughs> so it's, it's glued directly to the, right. to the cutout that I made. From under here, it looks, with the tires oh. on it, it looks like it should. Look down through there, you can see where I made a tunnel. Yeah. And underneath that seat, I had to cut out a whole bunch. You can barely see it back in there. You can maybe get a shot right there. You can hack the hell out of the back of that seat to get it in there. Yeah. Right. You look real close, right there where the two seat belts cross. I'm trying to get it the best I can. I didn't use my good phone. But right there where the two seat belts cross, if you look at the crack where the back of the seat and the bottom of the seat come together, yeah, it looks like, it's like a booger there. Yeah. That's because that's where I came through the seat <laughs> to try to get that tunnel in there. It got a little like, thin and melted. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you had actually shown that before you even painted the seat. You showed that little bugger there. No, he had the seat painted and he showed it. <laughs> Did he? He hadn't had the seat belts in it yet. Though. I thought he. I thought the seat was still in raw plastic when he showed that little bugger. Yeah, it may have been, but I know he showed it when he had painted it too. <laughs> He froze. Yep. Froze and Michael on the screen. Okay, people, how many paint bottles behind them? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even got a quarter of that. I got maybe one or two. <laughs> And actually, of those tops, I have the clear orange, the clear green. That kit would be cool with one of them Hellcat motors in it. I'm going to make a limo out of it. I'm going to stretch it. Ooh. Oh, nice. See, now that is a modern car I can get behind. I've built two of that kit. To me, they are a brick when they're done, man. They are thick and solid. Yeah, I always loved the 300. Little fat man's car. That's what I always call it. Now I'm an old fat man. They don't make it anymore. Well, they're de they're definitely a luxury car. You can get them with the little six bangers all the way up to the Hemis. 
Yeah, them are them are definitely some awesome cars right there. Yeah, them three cars. Actually, I'd like to get this one and the Magnum kit and switch the switch the them, switch the grills on them. Oh, that would be nice. Let me see. I don't know if that's the same style. I always like the like the three hundred front end more than I did the one on the Magnum. Yeah. Um, you, you could make it work. I want to say that Chrysler is taller from the bottom of the fender down. You definitely have to modify headlights and everything else, though. Well, I would probably just surgically take the front fenders and hood and everything. Yeah. Because that should be the same. The front, I'll put the swap the whole front clip. It should be the same. I have pictures of the model if you want to see for reference. <laughs> That's like, I've got, I've got two copies of this one, and I'm going to take, I that. I'm going to take the chassis from one of those, and I'm going to take the, I, the, the cab and the pickup bed from one of these two uh, 72 racers wedge and I'm going to cut the bed down to make it a short bed so that the cab and the bed will fit on that uh, Jimbo chassis and then I'll take the front suspension out of one of my multiple uh, 67 Chevelle kits and graft that into the front end of the chassis to make it just a regular two wheel drive make make myself a little short chevy short wide 72 chevy short wide so i'll probably yeah. the gmc grill as opposed to the chevrolet grill but just put a bow tie one of the uh, chrome bow ties from the chevy kit on it one i just like the way that gmc grill looks better than I so. the 72 chevy and the gmc grill is such that I could add LEDs, whereas the Chevy grill is not. Right. I'd hey, have Bob, have yeah. you looked into the Uptown versions of them kits? Uh, With the suicide or the, the Lambo doors on it and stuff? No. Because I have an extra body of that that I bought as a parts kit. It doesn't have the glass and stuff. But it's the exact same 300C. I'm guessing it's the same width and length and dimensions as that body. So if, if, you, need a, if you need a second points. one for making the limo with, let me know. I can send you that. Yeah, because uh, the only hard part would be yeah, doing the, uh, the door sections. Not necessarily. If you cut it right center of that B pillar. Yeah, that. but the, the filler panel to go between it. Well, that's what I mean. If you have my kit, then you just take the two doors from wheel well to wheel well, stretch it however yeah. long you want. You yeah, got the yeah. roof piece that has the same art. The rest of it's garbage, and you fill it in. Yeah, yeah. Some of the second body, yeah, it would be a lot easier. I was going to do it just for sheet stock. That was going to be the hard part was matching yeah, the door. I want to worry about the roof because you put a vinyl roof on, and that takes care of that. Vinyl roof hides a multitude of sins. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but yeah, if you have the actual roof piece, then you don't have to worry about the contours and stuff. You yeah. Just have the to work on. And... Yeah. You know, wicked cool. 
a third generation Camaro. I can dig that out for you and get some pictures and send you some emails to take a look at. All right. Throw a ruler up against it to show you some dimensions of it and things so you have a, a rough idea anyway. Somebody take a, a third gen Camaro and stretch it out into a stretch limousine. <laughs> that would look awesome. That'd be badass. That would belong to the same guy that has the stretch summer. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody with too much money and no sense. <laughs> Except that uh, I got me. Too much money. <laughs> well, now if they did it with six wheel and slammed and super wide fucking thirties on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of like, stretch hammers around here. All right the the way that Jimmy has the third gen body sitting up on that high rise four by chassis in his little picture on his camera screen right there, take something like that. But that's a future out into a stretch limo. Yep, that would just be awesome. They've done that in the 80s. That was the they original. They had hot tubs in the back and everything back in the trucking days. But that car, that's my profile pick, was the original car that was going to get that blown Hemi with those big four-wheel drive tires. Mike is back. Yep, I'm back, guys. <laughs> Finally got it working. I was messing with the camera, and when I finally couldn't figure out why it wasn't working, I went back all the way out, and I realized I, I must have, in, in my ignorance, because I don't know what I'm doing, I had op actually opened up the live six times, and I had my camera trying to do six things at once, wow. and it said, no, I ain't doing <laughs> that. That'll do it. <laughs> Be right back. Yeah. That'll definitely do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how to operate this damn thing. I try, feel, but I don't know how to do it. Don't feel bad. I'm not that tech savvy either. <laughs> I, I like I said. I, I was telling somebody the other day. I don't even own a personal computer, and I own a business. I, I do all my stuff old school. Keep track of the invoices. My taxes are done, basically through my checking account from the business. So I don't have the you know. I I I have no idea. I. When it comes to ordering parts and stuff, I know how to do that through my phone and to, through my suppliers. But I can look on the I look on my supplier's page and I pull up a picture and show it to the customer. I can do that on a laptop that I have, and then you know show them what they're buying. But when it comes time to order, I, the old school buddy, I pick up my phone and say, "Hey, Josh, I need such and such a so and so part number," and he's like, "Okay," instead of just. You know, ordering it off the computer because I just don't know what I'm doing. Right. I, I'm probably trying to buy a lift kit for a 2017 Jeep and end up with uh, rear springs for 74 Pinto. I, I don't know what I'm doing. That's bad. I know it's bad. I know how to put all that stuff on. I know how to put all the parts on, but I have no idea on the rest of it. Hmm. There's a V10 when it's in the well, it's in the chassis. Mike, I'm, I'm going back and paying the water bill. I took the uh, some parts parts, and the motor is just basic. There's no smog pump on it or nothing. So I took the parts parts and put the aluminum pulleys on it for the alternator, the water pump, and the uh, you know the drive pulley. Mm. I had to use two pulleys on the bottom. Let's see if you can see. It. I got two pulleys on the bottom. Because the way the uh, alternator and the water pump stuck out so much far forward from the crank pulley, mm -hmm. I had to have a second V on there. So I took, you know, power steering pulley and uh, flipped it over backwards so the bevels, you can kind of see it, so the bevels facing out mm -hmm. and glued it to the front of the first pulley. And now it's a two pulley bottom. I mean, there's only one belt, but it makes it look right. It gets the belt more or less lined up. It ain't perfect, but it more or less lined up. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is now because it's on there. <laughs> yeah, that thing looks badass. It's oh, getting yeah. there, man. I'm really proud of the interior. The interior looks really good. It's an it's an aftermarket steering wheel, but it's kind of old school enough, but new school at the same time. And yeah. I painted it up to match the interior. 
But I didn't have the heart, you can see it, I didn't have the heart to take the omni column shifter off. So I left it on there and painted the knob green to match the interior, but it's got the old school pistol grip shifter in it. Yeah. But I just, I had, I thought about cutting it off, you know, because obviously you don't need it on the tree anymore. But I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't bring my heart to cut that off. It was just too cool. Left it on there. So you have options. <laughs> so I have options, right? <laughs> I have options. So that's the tilt steering adjust lever. There it is. That's the tilt steering adjust lever. I'm like, how you think, man? That's awesome. <laughs> Got to be creative, bro. Hey, yeah, go right? for it. That's, it. that's the nitrous shifting. <laughs> that's what it is. I pull that down for the laughing gas. <laughs> yeah. That's the uh, lever for the airbags. Yep, because actually the bags you, know, you, can't see you can't see them. You'd have to be really good and be here to see them. But they're actually it may be just barely see. Them. There is an airbag in the front. Yep. That's the up, up and down up. lever for the bags. <laughs> that's it. That's the up and down there lever for the bags. And it's nicotine time, y'all. I shall return momentarily. Uh, we'll be here when you get back. But, but no, I primered up the body yesterday. I'm actually painting. Ooh, what does Mike have behind him? Oh, I got a few things back there. Some empty boxes. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, uh, when I painted the interior, I painted the whole thing that light green and then taped it off and painted it to dark green. And I love the way the, the with that base coat of that light green made the dark green stand up. So now I've gone ahead and painted, primered the body, and now I've got the first coat of the light green on the body. So I'm going to put the uh, oriental green on top of that to get the same look out of it. Because it really, I mean, the oriental green was dark anyway, but when you put that lighter green behind it, I think it, I think it brightened it up a little bit. So. But, uh, should have it painted by the end of the week. Hopefully, if I keep nibbling at it like I have been, it should be done by the end of the week. And then get back on my motorcycle. Yep. Since Terry two, Terry 2 is so far ahead of me now. Oh, I think I showed you guys this earlier, didn't I? The brake booster and uh, master cylinder. Oh, wow. The two part from VCG resins. It's a two part deal. The brake booster and the master cylinder are separate, but I made the wires. Now, obviously, there's way too many coils in there, but I didn't know how much I was going to need to run it up underneath the chassis to get rid of it. So I put a whole bunch of coils in there, and obviously, I can stretch it out. And it only needs like three or four coils at each one, but we'll run the wire down and hide it somewhere underneath there and be done with it. Probably take a take those little beads. Um, that you get from like Michael's and that those little teeny tiny beads. And yep. I glue it to the frame, and it actually looks like a grommet or a gusset. To uh, I call it an eight L clamp. It looks like an eight L clamp, so you run the wires into that. So when it disappears, it looks like it just went into the frame or whatever. And I won't wire it all the way to the back. That's too much. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna. I can't wait to see it done, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it in the see it in the camera or not but i put little teeny tiny maybe just there you can see a little teeny tiny wire to run the fuel injectors it's green and the green plug wires but i thought that was pretty cool and i can't see it while it's in but if you take the motor out now obviously this would never run because it doesn't it isn't right but the plug wires come back go into an ignition box and then the green wires that come off of the injector run into the ignition box too so they all got somewhere to go it's obviously not What's the word I'm looking for? It's not, uh, you know, it would never run like that, but it looks like it's supposed to be, looks like it, sh I say it looks like it would work. <laughs> it looks I like it's supposed to be there. Looks like it's supposed to be there, yeah. Yep, yep. But I can't find an air breather that I like. The only one that they offer for that intake is this big, gaudy-looking, ugly bastard. Yeah, that's what's on the Viper motor I'm you messing with, too. Even uh, I mean, obviously, Ice Man's that's both it's an Ice Man motor, but uh, use the, other, the uh, other one I got there's big, fucking stupid looking thing. Use the air intake off one of the uh, LS motors, they're a little bit smaller, and you can kind of move them right. around. Yeah, put, put, the, put the one cone, and I thought about trying to figure out a way to build a piece that, um, because you know, it's got that. 
big mouth, right? I mean, it's huge mm -hmm. mouth on this one. So I thought about getting, like you said, a regular comb cleaner to put out here and then make something out of putty or uh, world green stuff or whatever to, to narrow it down, right? Bring it, you know, basically like a, what would be an adapter or something. But yeah. I, I don't know. I could take a piece of heat shrink, put it over it, and then dip it down and run it somewhere to the fender or something, and then it would look like or through the uh, core support and make it look like an intake too. So I mean, there's a couple yeah. of different things I could do. We'll figure it out one way or the other. Yep. But yeah, I wasn't. I, I was hoping to not have to cut that trunk or that deck lid to get those tires in there but they're not they would have if i'd have raised it up off the ground a little bit but there was no way where i where i was wanting to stuff them that they were going to fit in there and that deck lid be in there but the yeah. truth is now you can look right in the back window and there's the tires <laughs> yep we'll make it a feature right it is that's what i did i figured you know, it would look cool being in there. i thought about buying you know they sell those they sell those, uh, what do you call them, tubs or whatever. I thought about putting one, putting, getting a set of them, putting them over it. And I'm like, you know what? Nah, it'll be all right. It'll all right, cool. Bob, check it out. I got my camera. <clears throat> oh my god! <laughs> but this, this is one of the uh, up, uptown versions with the uh, suicide or Lambo doors. Is that that Dodge? This is the 300C. Okay, I've got a Cadillac that does that. Yeah, they have the Cadillac, the Charger. They've got a few different ones, the Escalade. Yeah. This no, one, the door is wild. glued shut on it, but it still has this much of that body section. Uh -huh. But you can see this line goes upward. So you may have to cut straight across and then bring one end <laughs> up or down and then fill in a little triangle you know what i mean yeah to, to keep the side molding and the door lines and everything fit but i think some of that is down here so you might be able to line up the top and then fill on by the rocker panel but this this would be the same exact kit basically and as you can see it's got the uh 300 c grill and bumper and everything to it and then you were saying you'd prefer like the Magnum nose on it. This is the exact same kit, but it is the charger. But this one I don't have the doors for, which don't matter because they wouldn't fit yours anyway. But it does have the right grill, headlights, and hood with the stinger. It needs to be stripped or whatever. This is the way I bought it. And then I also have a parts car magnum version that somebody turned into a two-door i believe this Ooh. was actually a four-door because there's so much work in here in the doors there's a seam and everything you can tell they they modified the doors on it but this one's missing headlights grill and everything else but this is the magnum style version and this is the doors actually do the lambo style oh nice <laughs> that needs finished that thing is badass that's what i thought too but when you look at this side it's all messed up here it's broken yeah. there it's it's uh and don't show that side that's how i am <laughs> well it's, it's not so much that it's that this is so dainty like everything else is pretty well structured and solid but if you look in here you can see where the door panel and then that that b pillar part would have been yeah you know, you can see that in there. That's how much they extended it. And, I mean, they did a good job, kind of. You can see the line up here doesn't really fit quite right and stuff. You know, it, it definitely needs a lot more love than it got. But if this body will serve you any good for what you're planning to make the limo, um, if I went height-wise in the back, Looks like one and a half in the back. Mm, about a sixteenth short in the front of one and a half from the front to the back. 
So I think you could make that up off of the rocker panel, no problem, really. You know, I mean, if the rocker panel is one solid piece, that's easy to fill, and then you just yeah. knock out what you need in there. And obviously, with the door panels inside here, they just pop right off. But as long as this door is glued to the frame all the way around, it'll stay as one piece for you. You know, yeah, I was looking at probably for stretching it, I'd probably want to cut one the spot right at the start of the rear wheel hub, rear wheel arch, and cut the other one right at the I'm showing front, right where the A pillar meets meets the roof. I'm showing and fill two. in the I'm showing two and seven eighths inches inside to inside width wise on the body. Yeah, which is what you would need in order to know that the roof is about right. There's so much curve. This isn't going to give me an accurate, accurate yeah, measure. This is real close. Um, outside, I outside two inches and a quarter from here to here on both sides. And that, that would, should be enough of that roof panel in there for you, for the stretch. But like I said, this car is not going to do me any good. I mean, I could do a lot with this, but for what it is, it would serve your purpose just as easily. Yeah. And seems you can see this is the condition of the kit. I would much rather make this a limo and throw the rest of the parts away or do something with, but... And if you want this one for the nose, I don't know if, oh, come on, get under there. Yeah, we use, mm, it, be yeah, it, it looks like from door opening to wheel arches are pretty good. If you wanted to swap that whole nose on there. I, I know on the real this, one you can. This this one is a little flatter. This one's a little more round. So I'm not sure that would work too well. Oh, yeah, it would work. It would work. You can see there's just a little bit of black peeking through on the hood right there. Now, that wouldn't be too hard to modify a little bit. But, I mean, this would fit onto here. I don't know if it would fit onto yours, but this would get you that whole Magnum nose. Yeah. So I mean, if you're if you're interested, I'll keep the blue one. You can have these two, and okay, we'll work out something and make it happen from there. All right, that sounds good to me. You can take me off of the big screen. I got to reduce my screen first. I had it blown all the way up so I could see what was going on. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I, I always thought that Magnum version was pretty cool when I saw it. I bought it, and when I got it, I found out how bad a shape it was really in, and it was like, man, the camera just didn't do it justice to let me know what kind of piece of garbage I was buying. Yeah, just show one side. Well, it needs some rims and some little booty doos. Well, with these kits, they're curbside anyway, you know, there's no motor or anything, so it's it's kind of a a display piece more than anything rather than a freaking take it to a show and show off your skills with it kind of thing but that's the kind of thing i like to you know something that's not there's not going to be 15 of them sitting on the table show. right mm -hmm. and I, I do have some of the other <clears throat> bits and pieces that go with these but oops, God damn it. <laughs> that's that's how easy they fall apart and it's such a pain in the butt because everything goes in certain layers. Get in there. Yeah, just send me an email how much you need for it with the postage and stuff, and I'll send you. I can PayPal it to you. Or... Well, let's start with uh, I'll send you an email to get your address. Okay. And I can get a shipping quote. All right. And, and then we'll just round it up a couple of bucks from there. Sure. sure. I'm pretty sure I had maybe eight bucks plus shipping in this when i bought it so it's not like not like i'm looking to make 10 bucks on the pair of them or anything
and I know how to find your email and all that fun stuff. Okay. Um, see if I can do this. No, way over that way to get a mic on a stick. <laughs> and way over that way to get an Ed on a stick. <laughs> Ed's on the stick. <laughs> Sorry, I was about to pull the Ed and start snoring there. Pull the stick out of the heel on a stick. <laughs> on a stick. <laughs> that was messed up. I had to go into my OBS and turn off my virtual camera. Go back into my settings, turn on my my China camera. So now if I do a recording, I gotta go back in and turn off my China camera, turn on my OBS again. They don't like to play if with each other. Anybody would notice if I put the radiator in the back of this thing. Be fine. They've done it before. But yeah, you wouldn't be able to see it, but I can just I could make the hoses look like they run through the frame to the back. Here's What's another option. Cut the radiator in half and put them down in front of the front tires. Oh, not on this one. I, I see what you're saying, and that probably worked, but one of these front tires are almost as big as the rears, and they take well, up it, all it, of the space. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? That's yeah, the way the that. Porsche runs it, the Ferrari yeah. runs it, all the muscles are super Put them hard. like in the uh, grill or whatever. Yeah. I, yeah, that's what I was thinking is because there's a the, the, the body's in the easy bake oven, but there's a there's the pillar or the, uh, the, the what's the word I'm looking for the radiator holder thingy, and core then there's core. yeah core support that's what I'm looking for, and then there's a, a good size a good bit of distance between that and the actual front of the vehicle. So I'm thinking I could get like a NASCAR radiator that's lower and has the oil cooler on the side. Detail it up because that's what I put on the uh, on the pacer. Do you have any NASCAR kits? I, I got like <laughs> I got like one. I, I was I gonna I say I know you got a bunch of empty boxes. Yeah, I got a lot. Yeah, I think one of those empty boxes has a NASCAR radiator in it. A spare sure. one that wasn't used. I get you. Okay. Yeah, I think the kid actually glued it to the bottom of the box, and then when I got the box, I got the I got the radiator. <laughs> Score. <laughs> right? Yeah. 50 cent well Little spent. Little paper on right it. There. It'll sand off. <laughs> That's right. 50 cent well spent. <laughs> That's funny right there. I, get, That's funny. I don't give a damn who you are. That's funny. I got this one off of eBay somewhere. I don't even remember where. Um, probably worked for you. Yeah, a little teeny tiny one with the fans. And it yeah. comes with the two. Two fans. Two fans. Forward. It's uh. Shoot, it's teeny. It's about uh, a little under three quarters tall. About an inch and an eighth. Right wide. at an inch wide. Yeah, that would. Yeah, it's the two can. fans and the two brackets. That is cool. I don't. I might have something like that. I don't. No, under hood. That would be under hood. Well, yeah. With all the three D and resin stuff that you've got, Mike, I'm surprised you don't have something like that. Well, I've got a bunch. Of, I've got a bunch of fans, but I don't know that I have a fan radiator combo. I've got a bunch of fans. Hey, Mike. Sir, do you have any play doh or modeling clay? Play doh, yes, sir. Stick it to the radiator, cut it out, and use that as your radiator. Yeah. Because it'll yeah, pick yeah. up the grill work. Right. And that's all you're looking for. And once it's painted, <laughs> throw it in the microwave for a few seconds to take the water out of it. <laughs> you said the magic word, though. Hang on just a second. Because then you can cut it to size and shape, and you can square box it with some styrene to make it solid and all you need is the fin grating well i mean you can cut down any radiator for that matter but i thought i had a radiator kit over here in my detail master stuff but it's honeycomb style grill so it's 
like a like a like the mesh you'd put in front of a grill if you were dirt track racing or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. I thought for sure I had a radiator kit over here. Carburetor linkage kit, fitting line, seatbelt hardware, headlight screens, hose clamps, fluted radiator caps, Doctor hood engines, wheel weights. Why did I buy wheel weights? And why did I buy four packages of wheel weights? I'm never going to use them. <laughs> no, that's a tiny detail. <laughs> it is a tiny detail, is it not? I mean, the glue clear? drop is bigger than they are. <laughs> why are we? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen marks on a freaking a millimeter ruler that are bigger than that <laughs> i'm not kidding look i mean look at these things what do you who buys those somebody who's you laying did. in their bed and laying in their bed at two o'clock in the morning and like i don't have that part number click <laughs> <laughs> the staple is bigger than all four of them <laughs> the whole scraps look like mini zip ties those are those i like though those are cool <clears throat> for anybody who needs mesh, you know, the black mesh or whatever for their models for vents and things, Ravel Enzo Ferrari, Modena 360, and I think there's another Ferrari from Ravel. They all come with a little, like a 3x3 three three or a 3x4 sheet of mesh. It's worth it to buy the kit just for that mesh. And they build up beautifully, too. <laughs> And I'm not even a supercar guy. I, I haven't been, or I never was, but I picked up this, what is this, three, three something, GTO, Ferrari GTO, is that right? 350 is it, GTB. Is it, hang on. GTO or G, 250, 250 GTO. 250 GTO. Yeah, I think that's, that's the it. older style. I don't think that would have a mesh in it. Uh, it's a pretty cool looking car. It's uh, one of the flat Revell kits. Yep. It's a pretty cool looking little car. They actually are wicked cars from back in the day. Yeah, I, I believe they are. Now it's time for my tackle meter. Hey, Mr. Taco Meter. Time to get on the Hudson. <laughs> Mr. Taco Seems Meter. I have my camera on. I might as well show you the rims that I'm using on my wagon. Oh, I thought you said you said you had your camera on. You're going to strip for us. I'm like, Ooh, yeah. Who yeah, no, that? I'm not doing that. Oh, come no, on. we're not looking for that. <laughs> Party pooper. It's after dark. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're not quite VVS. They're more of your, I guess they would look like kind of like the uh, the modern NASCAR style rim type of thing. Single lock in the center. But you can see this one right here has the black deep dish. Mm -hmm. All I did was I cut that off of the back of the other side. Because <laughs> one tire is just that little bit deeper than the other. Yeah. But yeah, and then I stuck a washer in there and then a, a cap to hold it in there. So that's actually mounted in there and spins. <laughs> hey, Serge, welcome in. And then I got a, a hey, brake sir. drum on this side. Yeah. But that's that's what I'm going to be putting on my wagon when I get that far. You can take me down. That's like. The other day when I stopped at my uh, local brick and mortar, I was given this IPMS Houston is holding uh, model mania 20, uh, 24 on the fourth. And I got to thinking to myself, I'm like, you know what? I know I said I'm kind of putting everything on hold while I work on my senior tribute. But I decided I wanted something other than my Pete built and completed <coughs> to take to the show, <laughs> to take to the show and enter. And so I went ahead and busted out my uh, 
what is this a 68 yeah my 68 dodge dart next car and uh i decided that one of these sets of wheels one of these sets of pegasus wheels that i picked up what i'm gonna put on there that's cool and i'm using the rear diff and spring set out of the kit for the hemi version and the springs and all that because the diff for the hemi version is a heavier duty diff and heavier duty rear axle but the springs have the axle set uh, further away from the chassis rail because they're those springs are meant for the racing slicks and i'm wanting this car set down on these tri-blades uh pro touring style so i'm gonna have to modify these springs a bit to drop that axle back down toward the chassis and you can't just do an axle flip kit where you put it on top of the springs uh uh also i'm gonna have to take and this part of the axle right here in between where the wheel attaches and the spring yeah i'm gonna have to cut that and then shorten in the axle because the axle is so long end to end that it puts the wheels it'll it flush with the, the body. wheels to sit outside of, so you got to do a whole narrowed rear end and <laughs> yeah it causes the wheels to sit outside of the body panel like that and i want the wheels down in the body panel like that i don't want to modify the body at all to do this kit so and i'm gonna to have to modify the front suspension as well because these uh these wheels won't fit on this front suspension inside the body either so it, it, it's gonna take some work but i think maybe i can get it done by the fourth i hope yeah. i can get it done by the fourth well, like the flyer said may the fourth be with you all right. I saw that on the flyer. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because this year's theme is Star Wars. Star Wars or military. Gotcha. Everything fitting good there, Bob? Yeah, it's tight, but I think it'll fit. Is it German? <laughs> Guten tight? Guten tight? Is that a German virgin? <laughs> Guten tight. Yeah. You know, Frau Guten tight. I think I told you, Bob, but you know you, you were a bad influence on me. I bought one of those stupid eggplants. No, I say stupid. That's not right. One of them dead bird eggplants. You'll enjoy it. I'm sure it will. It looks easy enough to put together, and I got that blackbird because I feel like I can just paint it flat black and be all right. Yeah, you can. I, can, I don't think I can screw it up. Well, it also has metallic black, satin black, gloss black, flat black, and dark black and light black. I felt, like it would, <laughs> I felt like it would have flat black and then like at the wing tips or something. I mean, for and I don't know that I'll go into all that detail, but it would seem to me like it would have some chips or maybe it would be like air smoothed out. So therefore like a glossy on the tips of the wings or the edge, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd have a little buffing going on. Yeah, it's that air, but yeah, it's that, maybe that's the word I'm looking for, buffing. What I thought about there in my head was some panel liner 
And then yeah, I mean, to me, I think it would look really cool if you had complete flat, flat black. Had a little bit of buffing on it and then panel washed everything so it had some gloss black lining in it. (laughs) Thought about hitting it with panel liner and I got this little blower thing that I, well, somewhere down here. Later, Joe. This little blower thing that I use to blow off, like before I paint and everything, I blow out the booth so if there's any hair or anything in there. Put this little handheld blower, I'd be like, hey, get it wet. (laughs) Hit it with that thing. Make it look like it's streaked across it. All right, Joe. Have a good night. Sleep well, brother. Bob, is that the ostrich egg version? <laughs> no, but I was going to say, I doubt it's going to show on camera, but uh, me. I know it's not an egg plane, but that's why I said, is it an ostrich egg? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It might show. Oh, uh, what I did, uh, Mike was on wherever the panel lines were. Right. I did a lot, just the slightest dusting of a, of a black gray. Okay. And along the edges. Oh man, that looks so good. So it was almost like it thinned out the the black paint into a bare metalish almost. Yeah, because the, their real ones are are titanium. Uh-huh. At least on the uh, the friction, if you want to call it for a better word, lack of a better term, the friction, the friction point, or, yeah. or titanium. Yeah, you can kind of see it in the so yeah. wherever the panel lines were, I just kind of a little yeah. bit of the gray. Uh, I see, it, I see gray. It. Yeah, I see it. See, that's something I haven't. I mean, I've tried and I've not been real good at. Is that it's whole really easy to go. look and that and that dry brushing? I, well, that I just did with the airbrush. I just put a, you put a card over it and you spray on the card, right. and just let a little bit of overspray go where you want it. That's cool. where the line would be. So like for this line here, you would just. Or even a piece of paper, uh, paper towel. Right. Boom, you just right let the paper there. towel where the line is at, and yeah. you spray on the paper towel, and all you're getting is that little bit of overspray going over onto the paint. All right, that makes sense. I gotta try. I gotta practice on some of that because I want to do a weathered car real bad. I think you know, a weathered truck or something, kind of an oldies one, but. I, I, I've not. I, I've gotten to where I'm okay with making regular yeah, paint one, jobs, but this that, one's got little that's added some stuff. Oh, nice! Oh, yeah, nice! Cool. That is cool. That is cool. I'm actually going to try to light up my uh, Terry build. The, that boot hill that I got. It's got the two lights right there on either side, mm-hmm. and it's a two piece light. I want to try to uh, light those up. I got some tea lights here, and uh, they're Bluetooth operated. Nice. And there's there's a guy, and you guys I think you guys know him, or know of him anyway. He's on. He like lights up everything that he's got. Every every model. Shameless. 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 Yeah. Shameless. And See my I BMW. Shameless. I I, uh, I watched a video of his, and he, he I got the parts he told me to get. He right down to the wire. There's this this particular wire he said to get. I got yeah it. magnet wire and then yeah, the, yeah. Man, that's wire. I got three different colors of it. I got the gold. I got the green. I got the red. I bought the tea lights and the little remote that goes with them. And uh, I feel like that I can that I can do on that uh, boot hill because you can hide it a little better. Square. And be yeah, that, these were done with this with one of these, two of these actually. These yeah, that's a tea light. Yeah, that's, that's what I got. You get light. six of them for a bucket, Dollar Tree or whatever. Yeah, I got like twenty five of them on, on Amazon for like six bucks or something. It was it was ridiculous. I just harvest I mean, harvest the bulbs out of them. Just use just yep. the bulb. That's that's what he'll have you. If it's the same one that I looked at, he'll have you take that thing apart, the the white part, and then like you said, take the bulb out. Yep. So he'll you keep. Hey, I forgot. I have to watch the video again to do it. But the way he you know he laid it out, it was super simple. And it looked really good when it was done. I'm building a 116th 32 Ford sedan, uh, or excuse me, delivery, one of those um, uh, mini craft kits, and I'm bi- doing it up for my girl. She wants it to look like an old hearse type of thing, and I want to put, it's got the big headlights in the front, and I want to put headlights in it. There you go. Good job on that plane, Bob. That thing is cool. I got to read your battery, battery remount my battery box in it. The battery <laughs> box was. duct tape, duct tape. Super That's what was it. Well, I got double stick tape down there. I had rubber band on it, but the rubber band broke. 
You get that on them big jobs. I can uh, double stick foam tape it because obviously it's been batteries have been there for like a year and a half and they still work. So they can't be that. I can I, I can tape it in double stick tape. Yeah, I have to pull it out once every two years to change it. And this is why we have a hard time showing our models, and we always see the sign "Do not touch." <laughs> well, I'm, I'm spazzing out right now. My Volkswagen is at the local hobby shop competing with my fellow club members that built their Volkswagens. People basically come in, you get a number, and they vote on your number. If they want your number, mine is number seven. If they like number 12, the best. And I'm not worried about winning as much as I'm worried about, I hope nobody opens that cabinet and drops my VW on the floor. I want to have our tech. Nah, you'll be fine. I don't worry about winning. If you get a, I've got a whole bag of, of awards over there. They just sit in a bag in a Ziploc bag on in the cabinet. I mean, I know there's at least four plaques. I don't even know where they're at anymore. <laughs> not worried about I don't want them to tear up my shit. The guys at the show. It's like when your kid goes to camp for the first week. You're like, oh no. <laughs> I've only gotten two plaques. One was a first place for my uh, Barris bathtub buggy. And the second place was a honorable mention or something like that in a class. I want to say it was the show rod class because that was pretty much all I put them in. But they're just little wooden plaque with a little brass plate on it. You know, nothing special. Yeah, you know? most of mine are just a little medallion, but... Yeah, there's I've five never, four I've lost. I have no clue where they're at. I've Dude, never so competed in a mic show. Shows. I've never mm -hmm. ever competed in a mic, except for one time at a van in. My parents used to go to van ins, kind of like biker rallies, but for van people. Right. And then uh, they we had one model show there, and I had a little Volkswagen van, a green one. And uh, I had done it up and competed, but I was like six. And uh, that, I've, but other than that, I've never competed or shown a model other than the Volkswagen at the hobby store. It's probably the closest I've got. I've never gone like JaxCon was my first real model show to go to. Anyway, I mean, I went to the Plant City one down here, and then another little one down south of Melbourne. But that JaxCon was the first real one I went to. And when I go to Acme this year, that's probably going to be the biggest one I've ever gone to. No, that's a yeah that. That's a popular, a strictly popular boat one. So it doesn't, you know, there's nine, there's a thousand models on the table. And only 10 of them are getting awards. So, yeah, yeah I don't, I, I plan to bring stuff up there just cause, but yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't. Yeah. You know, if you go there expecting to win something, you know, you're, 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 I'll be you're setting mistaken. yourself up for disappointment. <laughs> I'll be sadly mistaken. Well, you know, you never know. I mean, I, I would never discourage somebody not to or anything, but yeah, I just want to, you know, you go up there and act and plan on winning something here. Well, that's the one thing that when I went to JaxCon, everybody, you know, I met Tom and that's where I met Fred and Brian and everybody face to face and Papa Z. And they all they all asked the same question. Which one's yours? Yeah. Well, I didn't bring anything. Oh, man, you got to bring something, you know, even if it's even if, you know, you don't think it's going to win or whatever. You need to go ahead and bring something. So from go, that was my one regret, regret that I didn't bring anything up there. So I'm going to make sure I bring something with me next time. Which is why I'm wanting to get this dart built so I can put it so I can bring it and enter it in at Model Mania. Right. Because, you know, you don't know if it's going to win until you enter it. That's right. Hmm. And again, it won't be about winning, but it'll be about being, you know, in it and, and, and trying and learning and, and going from there. For me, anyway pushing myself to do something a little bit different and you know it's all about learning new skills and <coughs> the skills that you've got to a higher level agreed yeah unfortunately fortunately most of the old parts that didn't want to tell you how to do anything or most of them are dead yeah so I used to be an issue at the show. You just see something cool, and you say, "Well, how'd you do that?" I says, "Well, I'm not telling you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm afraid you're going to do it too, and they're going to you're going to take away from those are the guys that most of them are gone. Dinosaurs, man, they don't last long. 
We go now you're more likely going to get somebody you're trying to get away from because 30 minutes in, they're telling you how to do something. You know, it's like, okay, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I'm done. I ran, into, I ran into a little bit of that up there at Jack's Scott. It's nice that enough to fun. die, but you enjoy he it. wanted to tell me his whole life story. And I'm like, dude, you're a really nice guy, but I want to talk to other people. And you've got me like pinned in this corner and I can't get out. Oh, it was a second place. There you go, Bob. Just, just for shits and giggles to share. These are my trophies. <laughs> uh, that's on uh, share screen. Oh, you got it on a separate screen. Okay. First and second place. Like I guess I had nothing special, but they're they're plaques. <laughs> they're, they're, they're yours. Yeah. That's, that's all that matters. Took me a while to figure out which freaking folder they were in. <laughs> Here was one of the old resin cars that I had gotten one day. This was all there was. And there's there's that car I was just showing you <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Ended up selling this one to a guy over in Finland. A bunch of detail parts and all kinds of crazy shit. I got all kinds of freaking folders of pictures and pictures. That's what most of my first videos have been is just all the the snapshots of what I've done over the years up till when I was building something with the video recording. <laughs> yeah, the show I'm doing here in two weeks, that's an it's an NNL style pop uh, people's choice type show. So yeah. Odds of getting anything are slim to none. But I get to go and I get to see the models and Shop and converse, and I hand out shop cards and hopefully get some subscriptions. And see, that's me. I, I go. I mean, I, to the camaraderie and to uh, shop. <laughs> I want to go shopping. Would you guys like to meet my wife? Sure. Yeah. Hi, wife. Hi, Miss Wife. Ah, uh, yeah. Wow. She's curvy. <laughs> that's my wife. <laughs> And the mistress is a two door. <laughs> She's curvy. Yeah, this wife, is one of the, one of those Cadillac right. kits that I extended into a into my limo. I don't know if that comes off. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, look at that shit. You've got mail. You got mail. Yeah, I don't know. If yeah, but turning I want my lights on is going to be a good idea. Uh, maybe. Yeah, check that shit out. Nice. She's got every single wire I could find and put in there, including the freaking hood latch. <laughs> you got all kinds of details in that one. <laughs> oh, sir, thank you. You're welcome for the shop card. I'm going to have new ones here soon. I'll send you a new one when I get the new ones printed, too. Well, that reminds me, Bob, have you got your package from me yet? Nope. I sent it out the end of last week. I told you I found it sitting on the seat of my truck. I thought it had already gone out and it hadn't. So I was like, shit, I got to get Bob and stuff. Coming I from don't have, yeah, it has to go past my house three times before it gets delivered. <laughs> I don't have Jeff's shop card, but I got a miniature Jeff. <laughs> miniature Jeff. <Jew. laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. What a name. It's a mini Jeff. <laughs> Orale, amigo. But you know the problem with this little bastard? He's standing up there peeing on the model tire for my druid princess. <laughs> I don't even know where I got him from one day. It was like, yeah, okay, yeah, he's the right height. <laughs> Here's, yeah, here's a, what, what models I'm going to put on my new shop card. Here's a bit of weathering for you, Mike. This is the 60 Chevy truck. Oh, nice. Is that the salt way of doing it? How'd you do that one? No, this is my personal technique. Okay. And what I do is I spray the whole thing in multiple layers of brown, copper, black, 
a little bit of silver. I start with a silver base, mm -hmm. then just plain brown, then speckle on some black and some copper into it. Okay. And you, you can see it right here. It looks all speckled with black. Right. But when you're looking at it, it gives the whole thing like it was black, but now it's rusting. Right. So the black was the paint and then everything else. I get you. Right. And then if, if I were to rub on any of these areas, having that silver base would expose what looks like bare metal, like on your cross member where you'd hit the ground or whatever. You know right. what I mean? And I did the same thing on the body. And then I masked off the part that I wanted rusted, just ripped the tape. This part in here never really rust other than what drips down, basically. Mm -hmm. And then I sprayed it with the, the primer. And then once I pulled the tape off, then I can blend it together nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. And then these streaks are actually my stain paint marker. And then some of this darker stuff that you see is actually Sharpie. Okay. It's That's that cool, quick, man. that yeah. simple, that easy. It's just a matter of knowing which parts do rust, which parts don't it's rust. So much, yeah. You know, it's a technique. Pretty simple stuff. Like, it, like anything else, it's a technique, something you got to practice and learn and do. Like you want to know the best one to practice on? The a fully weathered, rusty Corvette. Really? You want to know why? Corvettes, no, Corvettes don't. don't. Corvettes exactly. Don't rust. Corvettes <laughs> don't rust, which will make everybody happy. Don't <laughs> <laughs> code oxidizes. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you, you know what I mean, right? It's like yeah. an oxymoron. A fiberglass right. don't rust. So what better to rust than fiberglass? <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah, if you that. fuck it up, everybody's gonna let you know it shouldn't have been done in the first place. So. <laughs> right? <laughs> so they're not. They're not. Uh, they're not picking on your work. They're just picking on your idea, which is all. Yeah. You get your work picked on. I, I yeah. See pretty much. I'm tracking. I'm tracking. <laughs> Piero's not rusty either. Their their bodies are all plastic. You want something that really rusts bad? A Dodge minivan. Yeah. They have the Lindbergh kit. Caravans, yeah, they were horrible. I they see your Dodge minivan, minivan and I raise you one AMC Jeep. Anything from 71 to 86. <laughs> I really wish rust. they would come out with an AMC Eagle. Oh, that was a cool car, man. That was really cool. But car. we need a model kit of it. I mean, if we can have the Pacer and the Pinto, why can't we have an AMC Eagle? I, I, you got me. I would be the one. I'd be standing in line to get one. I see your AMC Jeep, and raise you any metal vehicle driven up north. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Even northeast with all the salt from the ocean. Yeah, north. <laughs> so I know, I know a little bit about the northeast. That's where I was born and raised. Well, I say raised. I left when I was fifteen, fourteen, but. Yeah, it gets nasty up there. There ain't no doubt. Anywhere where the weather gets bad enough for them to salt the road, the road. <laughs> on a regular basis, the bottom side of that vehicle is going to be a rush. Out like like I have a, a weathering trip tip, tip for you. If you're doing something like an OBS, like a Chevy truck OBS tire, where every all the clear coat chipped off. You you've seen that on many vehicles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tape it, spray it with flat clear, and then peel it back off shortly after it's dry. Hopefully, you pick up some of the the edges of it, mm -hmm. and that gives you that chipped off clear look. <laughs> they used to have yeah. a duplicate color uh, spray and peel. Where you can spray it on, wait for it to dry, and then you can peel it off at any time. They had a clear, and it worked perfect for that. <laughs> it's cool. I know what you're talking about because we get that's the kind of rust we get down here. The clear coat gets eat off of the hood from the heat. Well, the Chrysler in the 70s and 80s had a flawed paint that would come off in sheets if you took it to the car wash. Right. <laughs> yeah, the adhesion wasn't there. And I don't know what it was GM did with the paint that they used on their OBS trucks, 
It was the metal. It was the metal. It wouldn't take it. Because my 94 has factory original paint, and she may very well run like a motherfucker, but god damn, she's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't ugly. She's got character. Yeah, oh, got she a, got more than character. I got a color clear, clear on it. Come up with Tina and add twenty thousand dollars to the price. <laughs> right. That's what They're gas. The original does. ones. <laughs> That's what gas monkey does. Like, yep. They spray clear. The original out. ones. Come up with Tina and add add twenty thousand dollars to the price tag. That is yeah, true. And tell tell them you put the uh, vice grip garage shine juice on it. <laughs> A little scotch bright and a clear coat and send it on its way. Ping, somebody likes me. <laughs> on Facebook, one or the other. Either that or it was just God saying, I agree. <laughs> oh, somebody sent me a Facebook messenger. Ooh. Mm. I What's the name? It was Dart. He said, tell everyone hello. Hey, hey Dart. Dart. Yeah, I can find you on Facebook too. I know how to do that. <laughs> I'm real hard to find. It's, it's the same. Everything's the same. Yep. I see your name pop up in my friend suggestion list thing all the time. It's like, I don't normally add too many people. I don't have any pictures of her on my computer, but uh, that's Maxi. Yeah, you can definitely see the clear coats going. <laughs> she ain't ugly yeah on uh, Ice Queen's Facebook page uh, for tomorrow's live stream Seamus or Seamus has a, the Boost Cadillac Eldorado oh, video. Nice. pearl violet with pearl white roof and full lighting kit well thing is, is that's what color she was originally that's under the floor mat on the passenger side of the truck Okay, Dart sent me two pictures. I'll see if they're. Ah, oh, yeah, we can. Let me download it. Was blue colors. It was beautiful blue. Mm -hmm. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. And one of these eons, I'll get around to getting her down and. Getting a little bit of body work done with her because she's got a few dents and dings, especially on passenger side. Image. Whiskey dance. Save image. And uh, then I'll have her. Then the, the black rubber trim that goes all the way around, that's gone. All the silver chrome is gone. It's going to be replaced with black chrome. That just adds a spot for rust anyway. Yeah. Um, where she was originally blue, she's going to go back to her original, basically sapphire blue metallic, or at least pretty close to what testers used to call sapphire blue metallic. And then where she's got that silver gray on the bottom yeah. of the rocker panels, <clears throat> that's going to be satin black. <clears throat> and then when I redo my interior, the hard plastic parts are going to be black while the cloth and carpet parts are going to remain blue. Nice. And her windows are already tinted so dark that the only way my window tint is legal is because I've got a working mirror on either side of the vehicle. Two and a half. Something, something like this right here. <laughs> Even though this is black in the center, not black on the bottom, but yeah. And I went with a, a two tone tan and blue on the interior. Yeah, I like that flat, deep sea blue. I just think it makes such a gorgeous denim color on the inside. Yeah, and there we go. Yeah, basically I'm using, using the 99 cab from where my hand up, it's going to be that basically that sapphire blue metallic. Yep. Yeah. And then body line yeah, down will be black. Going to be the satin black. Uh, that 
the black trim along the sides in that spot that's going to be completely gone like say the the front and rear bumper are going to be black chrome as opposed to the silver chrome put a black grill in the front end of her find a uh, a red bow tie to dark made project process progress no, that's the word <laughs> use your words he made pro something <laughs> Now, you know, yeah, really Dark doesn't do pro. He do, doesn't do pro anything. He does all pro yeah. stuff. <laughs> That's good, Dark. It's real good. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I saw some of that on his Facebook today. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I believe I'm going to call it an evening. It is what one thirty. Yeah, about that yeah. time. Yep. If I got to be up in a few hours, go do that whole work thing, which sucks. Yeah, being an adult sucks. It does. It does. I don't do it oh. very well, and then that makes it even worse because then people check on you. Yeah. I, You're 53 I'm years old. You don't know how to do. You know how to be a grown up. I'm like, no, I don't know how to be a grown up. Stop picking on me. It's not. We don't know how. We don't want to. Right. Yeah. It's right. it's not bad if you do it willingly. It's another story if you're forced. <laughs> But thanks for stopping in, Mike, and uh, say thanks to everybody. We're going to go ahead and shut her down. Sounds All right, good, guys, man. We appreciate you. Thanks for hosting, Bob. We appreciate right. you guys. Thanks, Y'all everybody. Be good. Be good for coming by. Right. Hey, I can Bob. wave now. Right. <laughs> everybody in chat, y'all have a good night. Sleep well. Kiss my ass. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, Jimmy's still there. He may be asleep. <laughs>